BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. Ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah, Yeshua, came to call the people back to the truth, his word, and to follow the righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be his disciples, and after his death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now after 2,000 years, Beth Goim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all the people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path. Teaching the Route 66 Kings Highway from Genesis through to Revelation and how you need and can come back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now let's hear the message. Amen. Amen. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Metiahu, Matthew chapter 7, please. Vamos a Mateo 7, por favor. Matthew chapter 7, please. Mateo 7. This is the 370th tape message. Este es el mensaje 370. It is called the pure word. Se llama la palabra pura. We will go through a lot of scriptures today. Miraremos muchas escrituras hoy. The hope is that you learn a lot about Yeshua today. Lo que esperamos es que aprendas mucho acerca de Yeshua hoy. If you learn anything today, si algo hoy, the hope is lo que that es, you learn how to go deeper into the Holy of Holies with Yeshua. Es que a ent más en el Santo de los con Yeshua. We're going to focus on Yeshua's words today Nos vamos a en las de Yeshua. and what they mean in a Torah understanding. ¿Y qué en un de Torah? There will be five parts to this message. Van a haber cinco en este mensaje. Part one Parte uno, is the most holy place es el lugar más santo, and the narrow path of pure gold. Y el, y el camino estrecho de puro oro. Part two. Parte dos, pure words. Palabra pura. Part three. Parte tres, inside this box. Dentro de esta caja. Part four. Parte cuatro, the holy place. El lugar santo. And finally part five. Finalmente parte cinco. The most holy place. El lugar santo del Santísimo. So let's start part one now. Comenzaremos la parte uno. Matthew chapter seven, please Metiahu. Mateo siete. We're going to look at verse 13 and 14. Vamos a ver verso 13 y 14. Go in through the narrow gate for the gate that leads to destruction is wide and the road broad, and many travel it. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Amen? Amen. Yeshua talks about things that lead to life. Yeshua habla de cosas que llevan a la vida. We must ask ourselves that today. Debemos preguntarnos eso hoy. What leads to life? ¿Qué es lo que nos lleva a la vida? What leads to a, a good life? ¿Qué, nos, ¿Qué es lo que lleva a una buena vida? Is a good life if you have a lot of money? ¿Es buena vida tener mucho dinero? If, is a good life if you have a wonderful body and people ogle at you? ¿Es buena vida tener un cuerpo bonito y que la gente te elogie por esto? Is a good life if you have nice hair? ¿Es buena vida si tienes un cabello bonito? And a real beard? Y una barba de verdadera. Is a good life if you have a big house? Es buena vida si tienes una casa grande. Is a good life if you have like eight children like the Casianos will? Es buena vida si tienes ocho hijos. What is a good life? Que es buena vida. What is Yeshua talking about here? De qué habla Yeshua aquí? But the scary part is. La parte que da miedo es. He says only a few find it. Dice, solo si algunos pocos lo encuentran. How many people want to be part of that few? ¿Cuántos quieren ser parte de ese montón? Well, today we're going to learn about the few. Ahora vamos a aprender de ese grupito. And to have that good life, y tener esa buena vida. Yeshua says, 
Yeshua dice, it's not going to be easy. No va a ser fácil. You're going to have to study hard, Minerva, Vas a tener que muy to duro finally pass the test. Para pasar el final. How do we pass the test with God? ¿Cómo pasamos el examen con Dios? Well, just like Minerva passed her test, she studied. Así como Minerva pasó el examen, ella and estudió. she prayed a lot. <laughs> y ella oró mucho. But that's what the Lord wants from us. Pero eso es lo que quiere el Señor de nosotros. He wants you studying His Word, Clarabel. Él quiere que estudies tu, su palabra. Marta, your beloved husband in heaven tu, wants you to pray to Him. Tu esposo en el cielo quiere que ores a Dios. God wants us going into that place with Him. Dios quiere que vayamos a ese lugar con él. And he says it's going to be hard. Y él dice que va a ser duro. He says it's going to require a lot of work from us. Dice que va a requerir mucho trabajo de nosotros. Because the rewards are incredible. Porque el regalo o, o la recompensa es grande. When you die, cuando mueras, these rewards, estas recompensas, the reward is el re la recompensa es that you get a room in heaven with the Lord. Que vas a tener un cuarto en el cielo con that el Señor. Gina, he's been building for 2,000 years. Y lo ha estado construido por 2,000 años. And he makes Oscar, even though Oscar is a carpenter. Y de, incluso si Oscar es un carpintero. He makes Oscar look like he can't do anything with a saw and a hammer. Le hace ver a Oscar que no sabe nada con ese martillo y esa rucho. Because Yeshua is a master carpenter. Porque Yeshua es un carpintero um, Um, con mucha experiencia. And he's saying to you, if you work hard. Y él te está diciendo a ti que si trabajas duro. If you follow my road. Si sigues mi camino. If you follow my narrow road. Si sigues mi camino estrecho. I'm making a room for you. Haré un cuarto para ti. And I'm putting your name on that door. Y pondré el nombre tuyo en esa puerta. And you're going to get to live with me for all eternity. Y vas a poder vivir conmigo por toda la eternidad. You will never have to go to work again. No trabajarás otra vez. You will not have to go food shopping. No tienes que ir a hacer compras. You will never have to do laundry again. No vas a tener que ir how, a la lavandería. How many vez. people would like that one? <laughs> you will live with him and he will provide you everything. Vivirás con él y él te proveerá todo. And your one and only job will be this. Y el único trabajo que tendrás es praising God all the time. Alabar al Señor todo el tiempo. And even if you can't sing, e incluso si no puedes cantar, you, Julio, You will be able to sing. Tú vas a poder cantar. Mark, you will be able to dance. Vas a poder bailar. We will all be dancing and singing together. Estaremos cantando y bailando juntos. If you follow a narrow road. Si sigues el camino estrecho. If you are part of the few that find it. Si eres parte de ese grupo que lo encuentra. So let's start a journey today. Comencemos nuestro caminar hoy. By turning to the book of Shemot, Exodus chapter 27, please. Y yéndonos al libro de Éxodo. Exodus chapter 27, please. Éxodo 27. We're going to read verse 8 through 21. Vamos a leer el verso 8 al 21. We're going to do a lot of reading today. Vamos a leer mucho hoy. Anybody want to read the word of God today? Todos, ¿Quién quiere leer la palabra de Dios hoy? We're going to look at a lot of scripture today. Vamos a ver mucha escritura hoy. And we're going to see how this puzzle fits together. Y vamos a ver cómo este, este rompecabezas se encaja junto. Exodus 27. Exodus 27. Verse 8 through 21. Del 8 al 21. The altar is to be made of planks and hollow inside. They're to make it just as you were shown on the mountain. Here is how you are to make the courtyard of the tabernacle, the Mishkan. On the south side, facing southward, you are, are to be tapestries for the courtyard made of finely woven linen. 150 feet for one side. Supported by 20 posts, 20 bronze sockets, the hooks on the posts and the attached rings for hanging are to be of silver. Likewise, along the north side are to be tapestries 150 feet long hung on 20 posts, 20 bronze sockets with silver hooks and rings for the posts. Across the width of the courtyard on the west side are to be tapestries 75 feet long, hung on 10 posts and 10 sockets. The width of the courtyard on the east side facing east will be 75 feet. The tapestries for one side will be 22 and a half feet long, hung on three posts in three sockets. For the other side there will be Tapestries, 22 and a half feet long, on three posts, on three sockets. For the gateway of the courtyard, there is to be a screen, 30 feet long, made of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely woven linen. 
It should be in colors, the work of a weaver. It is to be on four posts in four sockets. All the posts all the way around to the courtyard are to be banded with silver and to stand in sockets of bronze. The length of the courtyard is to be 150 feet and the width 75 feet everywhere with the height seven and a half feet. The tapestries and screens are to be of finely woven linen and the sockets are to be of bronze. All the equipment needed for every kind of service in the tabernacle as well as the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard are to be of bronze. You are to order the people of Israel to bring pure oil, pounded olives for the light and to keep the lamp burning continually. Aaron and his sons are to put it in the tent of meeting outside the curtain in front of the testimony and keep it burning from evening until morning before Adonai. This is to be a permanent regulation through all the generations of the people of Israel. Amen? Amen. Look back at verse 11, please. Veamos al verso 11. Likewise, along the north side are, are to be tapestries, 150 feet long, hung on, tw hung on 20 posts, in 20 bronze sockets with silver hooks and rings for the posts. Amen? Amen. You're like, why am I reading this? Tú quizá te preguntarás por qué lees esto. You're reading this. ¿Por qué estás leyendo esto? You know, you'd be read, like you're reading your Bible in bed, right? Como estás leyendo la Biblia en tu cama. And you're reading this part of Exodus, or estás, the book of Numbers. Y estás leyendo esta parte de Exodus, los números. And it should be 50 sockets, 20 posts. Dice 20 columnas. And it puts you to sleep. Y te hace dormir. Right? Has anybody ever said that? ¿Alguien like, te ha pasado esto? You know, it gets pretty boring, right? Se hace muy aburrido, ¿verdad? And you're asking, like, why, Lord, am I reading this ridiculous stuff? Y estás preguntando al Señor, ¿por qué estás leyendo todas estas ridiculeces? But the Lord is showing us something. Pero el Señor nos está mostrando algo. This Mishkan. Este Mishkan is a copy of the one in heaven. Es una copia del que hay en el cielo. So when you get to heaven, Cuando llegues al cielo, you will already had a road map tú ya tendrás un mapa to know where things are happening. Para que sepas donde las cosas pasarán. And God is showing us something here. Y Dios nos está mostrando algo aquí. He is being very detailed about his house. Él está siendo bien detallado acerca de su casa. And he, the way he wants things. De la manera que quiere sus cosas. You know, I'm sure if I go to each one of your houses. Estoy seguro que si voy a cada uno de sus hogares. Where, where you live. Donde ustedes viven. You do things in a certain way. Ustedes hacen las cosas de una manera. You know, when you, when you go home. Cuando van a casa. And you're getting changed for bed, right? Y se están preparando para la cama. You take your watch off and you put it in a certain spot, right? Te sacas el reloj y lo pones en un lugar. Or when you when you you're taking you know you're you putting your cell phone you put it in a certain spot right. O tu teléfono lo pones en un lugar. When you buy certain foods right. Cuando uh, compras algunas comidas. You like certain brands right. Te gustan ciertas marcas. Or whatever cheapest at the moment. O lo que más barato sea en el por momento. But if you had money you would buy a certain type of brand right. Pero si tuvieras dinero comprarías una marca. So God I deny. Adonai is telling us today nos está diciendo hoy, this is how I want my house to de esta manera es que quiero mi casa que se vea. Because it's a copy here Porque es una copia aquí of what I have in heaven. De lo que yo tengo en el cielo. Because I want to dwell with you. Porque yo quiero estar entre ustedes. Look at verse 16, please. Veamos el verso 16. For the gateway of the courtyard, there is to be a screen 30 feet long made of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely woven linen. It should be in colors, the work of a weaver. It is to be on four posts in four sockets. Amen? Amen. So this very first curtain Esta cortina, la primera, of the Mishkan, the tabernacle, del tabernáculo, that separated God's holy area que separaba la parte santa del Señor, from the broad world, del mundo externo, this first gate esta primera puerta, was 30 feet wide. Era de 30 pies de ancho. That's pretty wide, right? Es muy ancho, ¿verdad? A 30 foot gate is pretty wide. 30 pies es muy ancho. So, but you got to look at something. Pero tienes que darte cuenta algo. There were 600,000 men that left Egypt. Hay, hubieron 600,000 hombres que dejaron Egipto. And they were men. Y eran hombres. So most likely they were married. 
Me, y sabemos que quizá eran casados. Let's say there were 70% of them were married. Digamos que el 70% de ellos eran casados. What was one of the reasons that Pharaoh made us slaves? ¿Cuál fue una de las razones que el faraón nos hizo esclavos? Because there were so many of us. Porque había muchos de nosotros. So there was approximately 6 million people that were outside the Mishkan. Aproximadamente 6 millones de personas estaban afuera del Mishkan. So that Mishkan. first gate that you would go through La primera puerta que tú pasas was pretty wide but it was only 30 feet. Fue muy ancha pero era solamente 30 pies de ancho. It was a boundary of separation. Era una separación. That not everybody could go past that first boundary. Que no, no todos podían pasar este, esta puerta. Only certain people could go past that, that first boundary. Solamente un número selecto podía pasar esa puerta. And it was made of very particular things that God wanted. Y fue hecho de particulares cosas que Dios pidió. It was made of linen. Fue hecho de lino. Of blue, purple, and scarlet. De azul, púrpura y rojo. And it was sitting on four posts. Y estaba sentado en cuatro postes. Why did the Lord have four posts? Porque el Señor tenía cuatro postes. What did God make on the fourth day? ¿Qué Dios hizo en el cuarto día? The lights of heaven. Las luces del cielo. So this area Esta área is where God's presence was going to be. Es donde la presencia del Señor iba a estar. So that first gate that you're going through la primera puerta por la que ibas a entrar lets you know that you're going into a separated area te deja saber que estás entrando en un área separada where, where the light was going to be. Donde la luz iba a estar. And when you went past that gate, Cuando pasabas esa puerta, if you were a worker in God's temple, si eras un trabajador en el templo de Dios, you didn't just bring in anything into that place. No podías traer cualquier cosa dentro de ese lugar. There were special garments that you would wear. Había ropas especiales que te and only special people would go beyond that first gate. Y solo gente especial y selecta iría detrás de esa puerta. Let's now look back at chapter 26 of Exodus. Veamos al capítulo 26 de Éxodo. We're, we're going to look at verse 30 through 37. Veamos, vemos el verso 30 a 37. You are to erect the tabernacle according to the design you have been shown on the mountain. You are to make the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely woven linen. Make it of, with kiravim worked in that have been crafted by a skilled artisan. Hang it with gold hooks on four acacia wood posts overlaid with gold and standing in four silver sockets. Hang the curtain below the fasteners and bring the ark for the testimony inside the curtain. The curtain will be a divider for you between the holy place and the especially holy place. You are to put the ark cover on the ark for the testimony in the especially holy place. You are to put the table outside the curtain and the menorah opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. Put the table on the north side for the entrance of the tent. Make a screen of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely woven linen. It should be in colors of the work of a weaver. For the screen, make five posts of acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and cast them five sockets of bronze. And cast in them five sockets of bronze. Amen? Amen. Go to the next slide, Connor, please. Sometimes it's better if you have a picture. Hay veces que es mejor si tienes una fotografía. Point to the entrance with the pointer, please. Okay. You would come in that entrance over there on the right. Entrarías por esa entrada a la derecha. And that would be your 30-foot gate. Y esa sería tu entrada de 30 pies. Would you, uh, would you bring me that? Thank you very much. Okay. So, hmm, okay. Oh, point. Okay, there we go. We go with the entrance here. If you want to come up front, you can come up and see it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. You go to the entrance here. This is where the 30-foot gate is. Ahí es donde está la, la, la puerta de 30 pies. And this would be the altar where you would do your offerings. Y ese será el altar donde haces las ofrendas. And here's where you would wash yourself. Y ahí es donde te lavarías. Then there would be another curtain here. Habría otra cortina allí. Which enters into the holy place. Y entrarías al lugar santo. And then there's another curtain here y hay otra cortina allí. that enters into the most holy place. Y al lugar santo del Santísimo. This would be a little bit smaller than it pictures here. And outside here, Afuera de aquí, 
are the people of Israel. Está la gente de Israel. And the Gentiles that are going along with them. Y los gentiles que están con ellos. So get this picture in your head, okay? Sí, uh, ten esta foto en tu mente. This is where you enter in. Aquí es donde tú entras. If you are a worker in God's house. Si eres un trabajador en la casa de Dios. Lo most people don't get to enter past this gate. Mucha gente no pudo entrar después de esa puerta. So I want you to see this so you have a picture in your mind. Quiero que veas esto y que te imagines esta fotografía. And how this is a rectangle, okay? Y cómo esto es un rectángulo. Okay, uh, you can uh, tilt the camera down now, please. Okay. Let's look now at verse 30, please. Veamos ahora el verso 30. You are, to do, you are to erect the tabernacle according to the design you have been shown on the mountain. Amen? Amen. Adonai wants us to do things the way he asks. Adonai quiere que hagamos las cosas de la manera que él pide. He wants your house designed the way he wants it designed. Él quiere la casa diseñada de la manera que él quiere diseñar. But particularly for this Mishkan, Pero particularmente para este Mishkan, that's the way he wanted it designed. Esa es la manera que él quería que se sea diseñada. So after you pass that first gate, después de que pasabas esa primera puerta, there's an offering area. Hay una área de ofrendas. There's a place to wash off the blood. Hay un lugar donde te lavas la sangre. And then only a certain group of people, y solo un grupo selecto de personas, get to go into that holy place. Pueden entrar al lugar santo. So as you get Closer with the Lord, Mientras tú te vas acercando con el, al Señor, you get to get closer to His special room. Tú te acercas a su cuarto especial. And in that special room, y en ese cuarto especial, there's going to be special things for Him. Y van a haber cosas especiales para él. In that holy place room, en ese lugar santo, there's going to be. Well, let's read verse 35. Veamos el verso 30, uh, 20, 35. You are to put the table outside the curtain and the menorah opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. Put the table on the north side. Amen? Amen. Okay, so when you walked into the holy place, Cuando entrabas al lugar santo, okay, you're walking in here. Estás gonna, caminando. Okay, on the right side, en la parte derecha, on the north, en el norte, is going to be where the table of the bread of the presence is going to be. Estar la mesa de la, de las ofrendas. Switch to the next slide, please. I got visual aids for you this week. <laughs> okay? So there you see as you walk in on the right, Mientras tú caminas a la derecha, on the north, en la parte norte, is the bread of the presence. Es la ofrenda del pan. On the south, en la parte sur, is the menorah. Es la menorah. And then here is the incense offering table. Y allí está la mesa del incienso. So you would go through this second curtain, vas a pasar por esa segunda cortina, which was only 15 feet wide. Que solamente era 15 pies de ancho. So the first curtain was 30 feet wide. La primera cortina era 15 pies. De and ancho. as you get closer with the Lord, y mientras te acercas al Señor, the road begins to narrow. La ruta se comienza a ser más uh, más angosta. And then you have these three beautiful objects in there. Y tienes estos hermosos objetos ahí dentro. And get that good picture in your head now. Imagínense esto ahora. Because we're going to turn off the projector now. Now we'll leave it up there for a little while. Leave it up there for okay. a little while. Okay? So here, inside that holy place, dentro de ese lugar santo, you got three objects that are special to Adonai. Tienes tres objetos que son especiales para Adonai. Ask yourself this question. Pregúntate esto. If a tsunami was coming right now. Si un tsunami viniera ahora. It was going to hit New York City. Y va a golpear a Nueva York. Praise God, we're up on a hill. Gracias a Dios estamos en la montaña. But if you had to go to your house. Pero si tienes que ir a tu casa. And grab the three most special things to you, what would you grab? Y, y recoger las tres cosas más especiales de ti, ¿qué recogerías? I'm going to grab that Torah. Yo voy a coger esa Torah. I'm going to grab that menorah. Yo voy a tener la menorah. And I might grab a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> what would you grab? What would you grab in your home? ¿Qué es lo que tú sacarías de tu casa? Adonai is saying, Dios te está diciendo, these three things estas cosas, in that first room. En este cuarto pequeño, now, primero, this is a two-room house. Esta es una casa de dos habitaciones. You know, a lot of times when people come over your house, right? Muchas de las veces la gente va a tu casa. What do you do with the bedroom door? You shut the bedroom door, right? ¿Qué haces con la puerta del cuarto? Tú la cierras. Nobody goes in the bedroom. Nadie entra al cuarto. But 
Maybe in your living room or your dining room, it's a special place, right? You got maybe some very special things in a special room in your house. So Adonai is saying that as you enter into that narrow gate, there's going to be three things that are very special to him there. Hay tres cosas que son muy especiales para él. But not everybody, not all the Levites get to go in there. Pero no todos los levitas podían ir. Only a certain group of Levites get to go into that area. Solo un grupo selecto de levitas podía entrar a esa habitación. People that are especially close with the Father. Gente que era más cercana con el Padre. So you went from the 30 foot gate, por la puerta de 30 pies, which separated you from the world, que te a ti del mundo. and then you go into this next place, which is a narrow road. Y a este lugar que era una puerta, un lugar Look at verse 33 and 34 now. Veamos al verso 33 y 34. Hang the curtain below the fasteners and bring the ark for the testimony inside the curtain. The curtain will be the divider for you between the holy place and the especially holy place. You are to put the ark cover on the ark for the testimony in the especially holy place. Amen? Amen. So there are three curtains found in the Mishkan. Hay tres cortinas encontradas en el Mishkan. The one that separates the Mishkan from the world. La que separa el Mishkan del mundo. The broad area outside God's tabernacle. De la parte de afuera del tabernáculo de Dios. Then that first curtain into the holy place. Y la primera cortina al lugar santo. That's curtain number two. Esa es cortina número dos. And finally behind curtain number three. Y finalmente detrás de la cortina tres. Is a very holy place. Es el lugar muy santo. With only one object in it. Solo con un objeto adentro. The Ark of the Covenant of God. El arca del pacto de Dios. In that narrow place y ese lugar muy estrecho, was a room maybe the size of this carpet quizá fue el ancho de esta alfombra. with the Ark of the Covenant inside of it. Con el arca adentro. Wow. And you would go in there once a year. Y tú entrarías ahí una vez por año. Like a very special thing between the bride and the groom. Como algo especial entre la novia y el novio. That first night between bride and groom is supposed to be special and private. La primera noche entre el novio y la novia es supuestamente ser especial y privada. So you enter into that special place once a year. Estás entrando a este lugar especial una vez por año. After you put on certain linen and garments. Después de que te pones algunas vestimentas de lino. So there are three curtains in the Mishkan. Hay tres cortinas en el Mishkan. Turn to Numbers chapter 22, please. Vamos a Números 22. Numbers chapter 22, please. Números 22. Learn anything today so far? Amen. Numbers chapter 22, please. Bamidbar, we're going to look at verse 21 through 31. Números 22, del 21 al 31. Okay. All right. Everybody got it? Say amen. 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 So Balaam got up in the morning saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. But God's anger flared up because he went and the angel of Adonai stationed himself on the path to bar his way. He was riding on his donkey and the two servants were with him. The donkey saw the angel of Adonai standing on the road, drawn sword in hand. So the donkey turned off the road into the field and Balaam had to beat the donkey to get it back on the road. Then the angel of Adonai stood on the road where it became narrow as it passed among the vineyards and had stone walls on both sides. The donkey saw the angel of Adonai and pushed up against the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against the wall. So he beat it again. The angel of Adonai moved ahead and stood in a place so tight that there was no room to turn either right or left. Again, the donkey saw the angel of Adonai and lay down under Balaam which made him so angry that he hit the donkey with his stick. But Adonai enabled the donkey to speak. And he said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam said to the donkey, It's because you've been making a fool of me. I wish I had a sword in my hand. I would kill you on the spot. The donkey said to Balaam, I'm your donkey, right? You've ridden me all your life, right? 
Have I ever treated you like this before? No, he admitted. Then Adonai opened Balaam's eyes so that he could see the angel of Adonai standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell on his face. Amen? Amen. Let's look now at verse 23. Veamos al verso 23. The donkey saw the angel of Adonai standing on the road, drawn sword in hand. So the donkey turned off the road onto the field. And Balaam had to beat the donkey to get it back on the road. Amen? Amen. So the, picture this scene. Imagínense esta escena. You're riding a donkey. Estás en, uh, cabalgando en tu burrito. And the donkey goes, Eow! and he runs off the road. Y se va de la, de la, de la ruta. I didn't hear you all. <laughs> Right, and he runs off the road. Y se sale de la ruta. But Balaam did not see the angel. Pero Balaam no vio al ángel. See, some people see things on the path. Hay gente que ve cosas en el camino. And they stay on the path. Y se mantienen en el camino. And some people run off the path. Y otras personas se salen del camino. You bring the word of God to people. Tú traes la palabra de Dios a la gente. You Jesus freak. Tú, loco de Jesús. You're talking to me about God. There is no God. No estás hablando de Dios. No existe you know, Dios. No, no, you got the thing. If, if there's a God, why do babies die? Y si hay un Dios, ¿por qué los niños se mueren? You know, sometimes when I say to people, if, there, if there's a God, why are you so ugly? You know? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know they go, if well, there's a God, why, why do babies die? Y si hubiera un Dios, ¿por qué mueren los niños? The first thing you should reply to that person. Lo primero que decir a esa persona. Have you ever read God's word? ¿Has leído la palabra de Dios? And I go, well, no. Y te van a decir no. And say, well, then why do you question if you haven't even read? ¿Y por qué entonces preguntas si no has leído But esa palabra? But some people run right off the road. La gente se sale de la, del camino. And they don't want to listen. Y no quieren escuchar. So Balaam, Balaam is riding his donkey. Está cabalgando su burrito. And it goes right off the road and he doesn't go, what's wrong? Y se desvía de la ruta y él no, no se pregunta qué pasa. So that's the first time this happens. Esta es la primera vez que pasa. Look at verse 25 now. Al verso 25. The donkey saw the angel of Adonai and pushed up against the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against the wall, so he beat it again. Amen? Amen. So the second time, the road begins to get narrow. La segunda vez, la ruta se hace más, más estrecha. And this time, Balaam's foot gets crushed up against the wall. Y esta vez el pie de balance se, se aplasta contra la pared. But the donkey is able to see the angel. Pero el burrito puede ver el ángel. But the man that's riding the donkey is not. Pero el hombre que está cargando no lo ve. Sometimes you tell people about events that are going on in the world. Hay veces que le dices a la gente de eventos que están pasando en el mundo. Start planning for what's happening. Comienza a planificar para lo que está pasando. Go get matzo while it's cheap. Compra matzo mientras es barato. Start planning. Comienza a planificar. Because sometimes people need to get a little hurt before they listen to God. Porque hay veces que la gente tiene que ser lastimada un poquito antes de escuchar al Señor. And you see how it was just his foot. Y solo ves cómo fue su pie. You know, the Lord's trying to get your attention. El Señor te está de la so all of a sudden, your knee will start hurting a little bit. De repente, tu va a a doler. Or something the Lord's, you know, poking at you. O algo que el Señor te está la so, but the donkey is pushing up against the wall. El donkey, eh, digo, el burrito se fue a la pared en contra. But the guy riding the donkey doesn't see what is coming. Pero el hombre que está no lo ve lo que viene. Even though the road is getting more narrow. Aunque la, es, la ruta se está haciendo más estrecha. Look at verse 26. Veamos al verso 26. The angel of Adonai moved ahead and stood in the place so tight that there was no room to turn either right or left. Amen? Amen. So in this third place, en este tercer lugar, there was no room no había to turn para darse la vuelta. Because the Lord was trying to get his attention. Porque el Señor estaba tratando de tomar la atención. And the donkey was able to see. Y el burrito podía ver. Now remember, the angel had a sword drawn. Recuerden que el ángel tenía una espada. So the donkey just sits down and goes, hmm. Entonces el donkey se sienta, el burrito. But then, you get to have a conversation with your donkey. 
Entonces comienzas a hablar con tu burrito. Has anybody ever had a conversation with a donkey before? ¿Alguien ha hablado con un burrito antes? If I could talk to the animals. You know, and here, the man riding the donkey. Y el hombre que está cabalgando el burrito. In this third time. En esta vez, en esta vez. Doesn't question what's going on. No se pregunta qué está sucediendo. But the angel of God Pero el angel de Dios got their attention tomó la de él. as it got to a narrow, narrow, narrow path. Llegó a una parte muy, muy Remember the tabernacle. El tabernáculo. Thirty foot gates. Una puerta de 30 pies. You entered in closer. Eh, te hace, te llegas más cerca. It got more narrow. Se hace más pequeño. Fifteen foot gate. 15 pies. You get to that whole, most holy place. Te vas al lugar más santo. You go through that next spot. Pasas a ese lugar. And you enter into a room. Y entras en un cuarto. Where there's not much room to turn either way. Que no hay mucho espacio para darte la vuelta. Turn to Matthew 7 now again. Vamos a Mateo 7. Matthew 7. We're going to look at verse 11 through 14 now. Mateo 7 del 11 al 14. Getting anything? Amen. Matthew 7, verse 11 through 14. Says, so if you, even though you are bad, know how to give your children gifts that are good, how much more will your Father in heaven keep giving good things to those who keep asking him? Always treat others as you would like them to treat you. That sums up the teachings, the teaching of the Torah and the prophets. Go in through the narrow gate, for the gate that leads to destruction is wide and the road broad, and many travel it. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 12. Veamos al verso 12. Always treat others as you would like them to treat you. That sums up the teaching of the Torah and the prophet. Amen? Amen. So here Yeshua, before he talks about the narrow road, Yeshua, antes de hablar de la camino estrecho, draws your attention back te llama la atención otra vez. to Torah and the prophets. A Torah y los profetas. What is the job of a prophet? ¿Cuál es el trabajo de un profeta? A biblical prophet. De un profeta bíblico. A biblical prophet calls you back to Torah. Un profeta bíblico te llama de vuelta al Torah. What did Isaiah say? ¿Qué es lo que dijo Isaiah? He's trying to get the, the leadership to turn back to the Torah. Está tratando de llamar al liderazgo de vuelta al Torah. Even for the prophecies today. Incluso para la profecía hoy. He's calling us back to Torah. Él nos está llamando de vuelta a Torah. So Yeshua is pointing us to something here. Yeshua nos está señalando algo aquí. You know, how are you to treat other people? ¿Cómo tratas a otras personas? You're to treat them the way God wants you to treat them. God gives us how we're to treat the poor, the widow, it doesn't matter. So before Yeshua says, y antes de que Yeshua diga, go in through the narrow gates, ve al camino angosto, he says, look at the rule book. Dijo, Mira al libro de la Torah. How do you know what holy is? ¿Cómo sabes que es santo? Did Adonai tell us Adonai nos dijo what holy is? Que es santo. And where was the book stored? ¿Y dónde estaba el libro guardado? Where did he give Moses to store the book? ¿Dónde le dijo, le dio, le dio Dios a Moisés para que guarde el libro? Into the most holy place. En el lugar más santo. Beyond the narrow gate. Pasando la puerta a angosta. I mean, yeah. Look at verse 13 and 14, please. Vean al verso 13 y 14. Go in through the narrow gate, for the gate that leads to destruction is wide, and the road broad, and many travel it. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Amen? Amen. Who was Yeshua talking to? ¿A quién estaba hablando Yeshua? Was he talking to the Greeks? Estaba hablando él a los Griegos. Was he talking to the Brazilians? Absolutely not. O a los Brasileros. Was he talking to the Mexicans? Estaba hablando a los Mexicanos. No! The Puerto Ricans? No way. Puerto Rico Who was he talking to? Hablando a quién? He was talking to the Jewish people. A la gente judía. What would they be taught in their homes? 
que ellos serían enseñados en sus hogares. They would be taught the Torah of God. Serían enseñados la Torah del Señor. So when Yeshua is saying going through the narrow gates, cuando Yeshua dice que vayan por el camino estrecho, and a hard road, y el camino duro, what kind of road do you think Balaam and Balak were on? ¿Qué clase de camino creen que estaba Balaam uh, yendo? Was it a paved highway? Era una 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 calle pavimentada? Or was it a hard road? O era una ruta dura? And it had walls on either side. Y tenía paredes en los dos lados. How did Balaam hurt his, hurt his leg? ¿Cómo Balaam se lastimó la pierna? When the donkey slammed up against the hard stone. Cuando el burrito se, se fue contra la pared. Then Yeshua is also pointing us back Entonces Yeshua nos está señalando to the holy place al lugar santo because it's a narrow place. Porque es un lugar muy angosto. And a hard road y una ruta la, la, dura. And then he's pointing you a little further. Y te está señalando un poquito más. And only a few find it. De que solo unos pocos la encuentran. How many high priests get to go in to the holy place, the most holy place? ¿Cuántos sacerdotes pueden ir al lugar santo? One. Solo uno. There's only a few of them. Solo hay algunos, pocos the high de ellos. priest would have a, could have a long time of being at his job. Un sacerdote pudo haber estado mucho tiempo en su trabajo. So the Lord is asking us today. El Señor nos está preguntando hoy. Go in through the narrow gate. Ve dentro del camino angosto. Go into where the most holy things are. Ve donde están los lugares más las cosas más santas. This is what Yeshua is talking about in Matthew 7. De eso habla Yeshua en Mateo 7. Go into the narrow narrow Gates. Ve, entra por el lugar, el, el, la puerta más angosta. Part 2. Parte 2. Pure words. Palabras puras. Turn to Psalm 119, please. Vamos a Salmo 119. We're going to read the entire thing. Vamos a, te, a leer <laughs> todo. Psalm 119, please. Salmo 119. We're going to read Beit. Vamos verse, a leer. Uh, 9 through 16. Del 9 al 16, Beit. Psalm 119. Salmo 119, versículo 9 al 16. Verse 9 through 16. Getting anything on the internet, guys? Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. How's the sound? Thumbs up, thumbs down. You getting anything, Jamie? Okay. Psalm 119, verse 9 through 16. Salmo, Salmo Everybody got it? Bait. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it against... Uh, guarding it according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Don't let me stray from your mitzvot. I treasure your word in my heart so that I won't sin against you. Blessed are you, Adonai. Teach me your laws. I proclaim with my mouth all the rulings you have spoken. I rejoice in the way of your instruction more than, than in any kind of wealth. I will meditate on your precepts and keep my eyes on your ways. I will find my delight in your regulations. I will not forget your word. Amen? Amen. Let's start with verse 9, please. Comencemos con el verso 9, por favor. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. Amen? Amen. What is the word for way in Hebrew? ¿Cuál es la palabra para camino en hebreo? Remember Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Recuerden cuando Yeshua dijo, soy el camino, la verdad. Or he said, I am the Derek, the Emt, and the Chai. Dijo, soy el Derek, el Emt, and the Chai. Derek, Emt, Chai. Derek, Emt, Chai. Emt. 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 Chai. Okay. Derek means the way. Derek significa camino. It means the way that you are to live your life in the Lord. Significa el camino que debes seguir para vivir la vida con el Señor. Guarding yourself guardándote de, guardándote okay, against anything that would go beyond that veil. De todo lo que se, sea des, uh, que esté pasando afuera de ese velo. Sometimes a curtain in Hebrew is called a veil. Una, muchas veces un velo en hebreo significa veil. Guarding things that would come and penetrate that are from the world. Cosas que, van a, que, van a, que podrían penetrar del mundo. So here in verse 9, aquí en el verso 9, the writer of this psalm is talking about el escritor del salmo está hablando guarding himself guardándose él mismo 
According to the word of Adonai. De acuerdo a la palabra de Adonai. So you must guard yourself. Tú debes guardarte. In accordance with God's ways. De acuerdo a los caminos del Señor. Guarding it, not letting it pass that 30 foot gate. No dejar que nada pase de esa puerta de 30 pies. We must do things according to God's ways and His ways alone. Debemos hacer las cosas de acuerdo a los caminos del Señor y nada más. Look at verse 14. Veamos al verso 14. I rejoice in the way of your instruction more than in any kind of wealth. Amen? Amen. You know, people say, well, you can't do the laws of God. Cuando la gente te dice, no puedes seguir las leyes de Dios. They're too hard to do. Son muy duras de hacer. We can't do them laws. They're for the olden times. Esas leyes son para tiempos antiguos. But here, the writer of this psalm El escritor del salmo is saying, I rejoice in your instructions, está Lord. Está diciendo, me, me regocijo en tu instrucción. It's better than any kind of money you could ever give me. Es mejor que cualquier dinero que pueda tener. How many people have said that one? ¿Cuántos han decidido es, dicho eso? Or how many people said, Lord, give me more money. O cuántos dicen, dame más dinero, Señor. I'll be happy if you give me more money, Lord. Yo estaría contento si me das dinero, Señor. But the Lord is saying today, Pero el Señor está diciendo hoy, if you want to follow that narrow path, si quieres seguir ese camino angosto, then you should rejoice in His ways and His ways alone. Debes regocijarte en sus caminos y nada más. Rejoicing that you're keeping things separate. Regocijarte que estás manteniendo las cosas por keeping, separado. Keeping Torah with no, no additives in it. Guardando la Torah sin, sin nada más que eso. You know, you have to keep things pure. Tienes que mantener las cosas puras. That's why I say here, por eso digo aquí. I see Yeshua doing it, I'm going to do it. Yo veo a Yeshua haciéndolo, lo voy a hacer también. But, you know, Paul says you don't got to do it anymore. You know what? Let Paul do what he wants to do. Si Paul dice que no debes hacerlo más, pues dejen a Paul que haga lo que quiera. Yeshua is my God. Yeshua es mi Dios. And he will not get angry at me. Y él no se va a enojar conmigo. If I'm doing exactly like he did, he does, right? Si hago lo que él exactamente hace. You know, you know, you ever have one of those parents Smoking? Has tenido padres que fuman? You know, when my sister started to smoke. Cuando mi hermana comenzó a fumar. You know, here she is smoking. Ahí está ella fumando. And my parents are getting angry at her. Y mis padres se enojaban con ella. But here were my parents. Pero mis padres también. <laughs> my fumaban. mother and my father were both smoking. Mi papá y mi mamá fumaban. How could you get mad at your child for following you? ¿Cómo te puedes enojar con tu hijo si te copia lo que haces? So here. You're saying, I rejoice in your ways, Lord. Yeshua is not going to get mad at you if you do what he did. Because then he would be a hypocrite. So you got to guard your way along that narrow path to this place to get to the holy place. Because there was only certain people that could go into that holy place. Porque solo un grupo selecto podía ir a este lugar santo. So you have to delight yourself in his word. Tienes que gozarte en, en su palabra. You have to rejoice in God's teachings. Tienes que alegrarte en las enseñanzas del Señor. And the writer of this psalm is saying y el escritor de este salmo está diciendo that this is better than money. Que esto es mejor que el dinero. You could have all the money you want. Tú puedes tener el dinero que, te, que quieras. But if you're a husband. Pero si eres un esposo. And you got a wife that's pecking at your head. Y tienes una esposa que habla mucho. Honey, do this! 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 You're like, oh, better not to have the wife. Mejor no tener una esposa que da mucha queja. You know, Solomon says, a wife that's not happy is like a dripping roof. Solomon dice que si una esposa no es feliz es como una, un techo que gotea. Anybody ever have a dripping roof? ¿Alguien ha tenido un techo que gotea? Drip, 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 all night long and you're like... <laughs> Toda la noche goteando ese techo y... So he's saying to have shalom... Él está diciendo tener shalom. It's better than having all the money that you think you want. Es mejor que tener todo el dinero que tú deseas. Look at verse 16. Vamos al verso 16. I will find my delight in your regulations. I will not forget your word. Amen? Amen. You have to delight in God's ways. Tienes que alegrarte en los caminos del Señor. You, you can't just say, hmm, I used to really love shrimp. No puedes solo decir, me encantaba el camarón. 
Oh, yeah, I'm going to follow your word, Lord. Voy a seguir tu palabra, Señor. I just don't like shrimp. Pero me gusta el camarón. You know, the Lord is saying delight in my ways. El Señor dice, regocíjate en mis caminos. Then you may not have a heart attack. Y así no tendrás un ataque al corazón. You know, you're eating all that stuff and it's doing something wonderful to your heart. <laughs> Estás comiendo todas estas cosas que te hacen daño. I want some of them pork ribs, baby. <laughs> and, and some of the fat on the ribs. Did you ever like eating the fat on the ribs? Te gustaba comer a comer el gordo de las costillas. After it was on the barbecue, all crispy like. Después de que estaba todo tostado después mm. de barbecue. <laughs> you can just feel your heart going. Puedes escuchar a tu corazón gritando. You know, but it tasted so good going down. Pero sabe tan bien cuando se come. But here the. He's saying, delight in God's ways. Don't forget His word. No te olvides de su palabra. So many people say you don't need the Old Testament any si la anymore. Gente dice que no necesitas el Antiguo Testamento más. Then you would be forgetting His word. Entonces serías olvidando su palabra. How are you going to know where the narrow road is? Cómo vas a saber cómo es el camino estrecho? If you don't have the map. Si no tienes el mapa. Or you have half a map. O tienes la mitad del mapa. How are you going to know what that narrow road is? ¿Cómo vas a saber de ese camino estrecho? And the key to this particular verse y la clave de este verso is don't forget them. Es no la olvides. You have to delight in the Lord's ways. Tienes que gozarte en los caminos del Señor. You, you can't forget how God wants us to live our lives. No puedes olvidar de cómo Dios quiere que vivamos nuestra vida. If you go past that first curtain si ya pasaste esa primera cortina, and you accept Yeshua into your heart, y aceptaste a Yeshua en tu corazón, God now says you're part of those people that are working in that tabernacle. Dios dice ahora eres parte de esa gente que trabaja en el tabernáculo. And you can can't forget his word how to do your job y no puedes olvidar cómo hacer tu trabajo because if you want to go on that narrow road porque si quieres seguir en ese camino estrecho you have to follow god's ways and god's ways alone tienes que seguir los caminos del señor y nada más how many people want to forget god's words cuántos quieren olvidar las palabras de dios how many people have heard new testament christians say you don't need the old testament anymore cuántos han escuchado a los cristianos decir que ya no se necesita el antiguo testamento everybody heard that right men well turn to john 1 1 John chapter 1, please. Vamos a Juan 1. Yochanan, John chapter 1, please. Juan 1. Anybody getting anything so far today? Amen. 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 Verse 1 through 5. Del verso 1 al 5. Yochanan, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things came to be through Him. And without him, nothing had been, had been. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not suppressed it. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 1 again, please. Veamos al verso uno. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? Amen. Everything starts with the pure Word of God, right? Todo comienza con la palabra pura de Dios. Once you start adding other things in, it is no longer pure. Una vez que comienzas a adherir cosas, ya no es puro. When Adonai said, let there be light. Cuando Adonai dijo que se haga la luz. The, there was light. Hubo luz. And the light was was pure. Y la luz fue pura. This is what God is talking about. De esto está hablando Dios. In the beginning. En el comienzo. Bereshit. En el principio, Bereshit. Okay? It's, it is pure light. Es pura luz. Now, if a Jew was writing this passage, si un judío estaba escribiendo este pasaje, Yo Yochanan is a Jew writing this passage, y Yochanan es un judío escribiendo este pasaje, through the Ruach HaKodesh, por medio del Ruach HaKodesh, what would verse 1 really say? ¿Qué significa el verso 1 realmente? In the beginning was the Torah, en el and the Torah was with God, and the Torah was God. Amen? Amen. El... This is what he would be saying, Esto es lo que él estaría diciendo. And why would it say that? 
¿Y por qué dice así? Because there was words of the rabbis. Porque habían palabras de los rabinos. There was the Jerusalem Talmud at this time. Había el Talmud de Jerusalén. There was the Babylonian Talmud of this time. El Babilónico. There was the Zohar at this time. El Zohar. There was so many other writings. Hubo, hubieron muchos escritos. So Yochanan, a Talmud of Yeshua, Yochanan, un Talmud de Yeshua, would have wrote in verse 1, cuando lo que escribió en verso 1, in the beginning was the Torah, and the Torah was with God, and the Torah was God. Amen? Amen. This is what he would be writing. Esto es lo que él estaría escribiendo. Now, where was the Torah placed in the most holy place? ¿En dónde fue la Torah puesta en el lugar más santo? Once you got to that third curtain. Una vez que llegaste a esa tercera cortina. When you got to this place right up here. Cuando llegabas a este lugar aquí. When you got here. Cuando iba, llegabas aquí. That's where you got. That's where it was stored. Ahí es donde estaba. You went from out here. Tú fuiste de, te, comenzaste aquí. The 30 foot curtain. La cortina de 30 pies. To the 15 foot curtain. A la cortina de 15 pies. You said a lot of prayers in here. Dijiste muchas oraciones. Because you were going beyond that third veil. Porque ibas a pasar de, al tercer de, después del tercer. And you were going to be with God. Ibas a estar con el Señor. Face to face. Cara a cara. And that's where the Torah would be stored. Y ahí es donde la Torah estaría guardada. You were going beyond that wide area. Ibas a pasar de esa área muy ancha. Connor, go back one slide, please. You were going from the outside Tú ibas a, a comenzar desde afuera. in the much bigger area en un área más grande. to the most holy place a lugar más santo. where the Torah would be stored. Donde la Torah sería guardada. Look at verse 5. Veamos al verso 5. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not suppressed it. Suppressed it. Amen? Amen. Light of the pure word of God is uncompromised. La luz de la, de la pura palabra de Adonai no se compromete. I have been accused many times of not being the nice rabbi. Yo he sido acusado muchas veces de no ser una persona Your muy rabbi is so mean. Tu rabino es muy malo. He talks so mean to people. Habla muy mal a la gente. I am not going to compromise on my father's word at all. Yo no me voy a comprometer en la palabra de There's mi padre del too padre. much compromising going on in the world today. Hay mucho compromiso pasando en el mundo ahora. That light that comes, what did the menorah say? La luz que viene, ¿qué decía la, mem la menora? It was pure olive oil. Era aceite puro de oliva. The pure light that came from that la luz pura que venía de esto was pure light. Era luz pura. But if you begin to mix the light with the darkness, Pero cuando comienzas a mezclar la luz con la oscuridad, how many forms of Christianity is there in the world today? ¿Cuántas formas de cristianismo hay hoy en el mundo? 1,200 brands of Christianity. 1200 uh, títulos de cristianidad. Do you think that it's mixed a little bit with the darkness? ¿Crees que está mezclado con un poquito de oscuridad? Light begins to fade when you mix the oil with something else. La luz comienza a apagarse cuando mezclas el aceite con algo más. But what, go to the slide with the, Mishka, the with the Holy of Holies please. In that holy of holy place. En ese lugar santo de los santos. Outside the most holy place was the menorah. Afuera del lugar más santísimo estaba la menorah. That light was pure. Esa luz era pura. If you want to go on the narrow road. Si quieres ir por el camino angosto. That Yeshua talked about in Matthew 7. De que Yeshua habla en Mateo 7. You must not compromise the word of God. No debes comprometerte la palabra de Dios. You cannot mix the light with the darkness. No puedes mezclar la luz con la oscuridad. It has to overcome the darkness. Tiene que sobrepasar la oscuridad. Why must it overcome the darkness? ¿Por qué debe sobrepasar la, la oscuridad? Because you are a holy place. Porque tú estás en un tú eres un lugar santo. Turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, please. Vamos a primera de Pedro 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, please. Primera de Pedro 2. You getting anything? Amen. You like the visual aids today? Is it helping you to understand the Mishkan a bit? Oh, yeah. This is what we do with the children each and every day in the morning to start off our day. 
should do that here every Sunday. Every huh? Shabbat. You should do that here every Shabbat. Every Shabbat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little, first Peter chapter 2, please. <laughs> Gotta add just a little more things to the plate. First Peter chapter 2, please. Primera de Pedro 2. Verse 1 through 5. Del 1 al 5. Okay, we read this last week, but we're going to look at something a little bit different. Vamos, leímos esto la semana pasada, pero vamos a ver esto un poquito de más, uh, de otra manera. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, of all deceit, hypocrisy, and envy, and of all the ways there are speaking against people. And be like newborn babies, thirsty for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow up into deliverance. For you have tasted that Adonai is good, and you come to him, the living stone, rejected by people, but chosen by God and precious to him. You yourselves, as living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be koanim, set apart for God, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to him through Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen? Amen. Look at 5 again, verse 5 again. Veamos al verso 5. You yourselves are, as living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be koanim, set apart for God, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to him through Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen? Now, last week, in last week's message, in message 369, we talked about being the temple of God, right? And about having that salt for the offering, right? And in your, where is your holy place? Right there. Your heart. You know, because your heart's going to override anything else that's going on in your head. How many people have had their heart override their head in some silly things? <laughs> you know, you know your, your, your heart, you're like, oh, that third piece of pizza is sitting there on the table. <laughs> the box of cheese is calling me in the middle of the night. <laughs> come eat me, come eat me. <laughs> Yo, it's calling you, right? Yo, <laughs> oh, and Jen's going, no, it's the baby. <laughs> So here, you, this is your altar, Aquí es tu altar. Where the word of God is being stored on your heart. The heart overrides everything, people. El corazón sobre, borra lo que, todo. How do you get to the heart of someone? ¿Cómo llegas al corazón de alguien? You know, for some people, Para algunas personas, some people get enticed with money. La gente le gusta el dinero. Come! Work these extra hours. You have bills to pay. Trabaja estas horas extras. Tienes biles que pagar. Yes, it's only a one Saturday. Es solo un sábado. Yes, God won't mind. A Dios no le importará. It's overtime. Es uh, tiempo adicional. It's extra money. Dinero extra. Some people get allured by food. Hay gente, algunos les, les gusta la comida. That's why you can never live next to a bakery. Por eso no puedes vivir de, de, al lado de una panadería. That was the worst thing when I was in Peru. Era lo peor por cuando estaba en Perú. I was staying at one of the pastor's houses. Y yo me iba a la casa del pastor. And they, they don't have like screens and windows like we do in a lot of places. Y no tenían ventanas y así como tenemos aquí. And there was a bakery right down the street. Y había una panadería ahí en la esquina. And they were making fresh bread all the time. Y hacían pan fresco todo el tiempo. Oh, oh man. <laughs> So some people get enticed by food. Mucha gente es dominada por la comida. Some people get enticed by clothing that they wear. Otros por la ropa. Well, you come in and the men are paying you attention, when ladies. Ven como el hombre les pone atención oh, a las mujeres. Losing some weight, are you? You look good. Bajando de peso, te ves oh, muy bien. I've been trying. And trying. <laughs> Some people get enticed by that, right? Look at verse 2, please. Veamos al verso 2. And being like newborn babies, thirsty for the pure milk of the word, so that by it you may grow up into deliverance. Amen? Amen. Grow into deliverance? Uh, Last part of the sentence. Pure. What does the word pure mean? ¿Qué significa puro? In Greek it is adolos. En griego es adolos. It means uh, 
guileless uh, means like uh, no guileless. No um, no pride. Sin uh, orgullo. Unmixed. Uh, no mezclado. Unadulterated. No adulterado. Pure. Puro. Okay. So here, when Kepha used this word, cuando Kepha utiliza esta palabra, his doctrine was unmixed by anything else. Su doctrina no está mezclada con nada. So if some silly person says you don't got to do the Shabbat anymore. Si alguna persona te dice que no tienes que seguir el Shabbat. If you want to have the pure milk of God's word. Si quieres tener la, la leche pura del Señor. You say, I like pure milk, please. Le dices, a mí me gusta la leche pura. The fourth commandment is the fourth commandment is the fourth commandment. El cuarto mandamiento es el cuarto y se acabó. So you, sh you remember, Kepha was with Yeshua for f almost four years. Kepha estuvo con Yeshua por casi cuatro años. And Yeshua spoke against man-made ways. Yeshua habló de las cosas hechas por el hombre. Kepha even says Kepha incluso decía about some of Shaul's writings. Acerca de las escrituras de Shaul. He says to the people, these things are too hard for you to understand. Él le decía a la gente, esto es muy difícil para ti entender. So, you do as Yeshua does. Hazlo como Yeshua hacía. Have the pure milk of God's word. Obtena leche pura de Dios así uh, como su palabra. You know, God doesn't, he calls us sheep, right? Dios nos llama a nosotros uh, borregos. How many people think that's a compliment? ¿Cuántos pensamos que eso es algo bonito? This is not a compliment by God. Esto no es un, uh, algo bonito. Sheep are dumb. Las borregos son tontitos. If a sheep is going to get slaughtered, <laughs> si un borreguito va a ser what does a sheep do? Degollado. ¿Qué es lo que hace un borrego? Bah. Don't kill me, please. Dice, no me mate, por favor. He stays there. Y se queda parado ahí. Maybe if I don't move, he won't see me. Si no me muevo, no me verá. So when God calls you a sheep, si Dios te llama que eres un borrego, He ain't calling you a rocket scientist. Él no te está llamando que eres un científico. He is calling us sheep. Thank you, Lord. Nos está llamando borregos. Gracias, Dios. That's why he makes his Bible so simple. Porque por esa razón su Biblia es muy simple. Do this. Don't do that. Haz esto, no hagas esto. That's what God wants. Es lo, esto es lo que quiere the Dios. pure milk of God's Torah is a narrow road. La leche pura del Señor o de la Torah es un camino angosto. Because the world will entice you to do easier things. Porque el mundo te dirá que hagas cosas fáciles. You mean you can't go food shopping at that store? Quieres decir que no me puedo ir a comprar en esa tienda? I can't buy that type of meat anymore. No puedo comprar esa carne más. Oh, that's getting too difficult. Se está haciendo muy difícil. You see, when God told us how to slaughter an animal, Cuando Dios nos enseñó cómo degollar un animal, He tells us how to empty out all the blood. Because what's in the blood, medical people? Porque ahí está en la sangre, gente. Viruses. Hay virus. All Viruses. different bad things are in the blood. Muchas cosas diferentes malas hay en la sangre. So God is saying, Cut the throat. Dios está diciendo, corta la, la garganta. Drain out all the blood so that you don't get sick. Saca toda esa sangre, si no te enfermarás. This is what he's saying to us. Eso es lo que nos está diciendo. That's what you want with the pure word of God. Eso es lo que tú quieres con la palabra pura de Dios. It is very simple. Es muy simple. It is very easy to follow. Es muy fácil de seguir. And if you follow these simple words y si sigues estas palabras simples, on the narrow road en el camino angosto, you are guaranteed a seat at the wedding feast of the Lamb. You're guaranteed a seat. Estás garantizado tener un asiento. But if you say we don't need the Old Testament anymore Pero si tú dices que no necesitas el Nuevo, el Antiguo Testamento, then what would be the pure word that Kepha is talking about ¿Cuál here? Sería la pura palabra de la que habla Kepha? What would be that pure word? ¿Cuál sería la palabra pura? That would be God's Torah, sería right? El Torah de Dios. How many people want a seat at the table? ¿Cuántos quieren una silla en la mesa? How many people want to sit at the table in heaven? ¿Cuántos se quieren sentar en la mesa en el cielo? Turn to Revelation chapter 19, please. Vamos a Revelación 19. Revelation 19, please. Apocalipsis 19. We're going to look at verse 1 through 16. Del verso 1 al 16. Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 through 16. Apocalipsis 19, del 1 al 16. When you got it, say amen, please. Amen. 
After these things, I heard what sounded like the roar of a huge crowd in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! The victory, the glory, the power of our God, for his judgments are true and just. He has judged the great whore who corrupted the earth with her whoring. He has taken vengeance on her who has the blood of his servants on her hands. And the second time they said, Hallelujah! Her smoke goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living beings fell down and worshiped God, sitting on the throne and said, Amen! Hallelujah! The vo a voice went out from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants, you who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what sounded like the roar of a huge crowd, like the sound of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder saying, Hallelujah! Adonai, God of heaven's armies, has begun his reign. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us give him the glory. For the time has come. The wedding of the lamb and the bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean, has been given her to wear. The angel said to me, write, how blessed are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the lamb. Then he added, these are God's very words. I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said, don't do that. I'm only a fellow servant with you and your brothers who have testimony of Yeshua. Worship God, for the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Next I saw heaven opened, and there was before me a white horse sitting on it was the one called Faithful and True. And it, and it is on <coughs> in righteousness that he passes judgment and goes to battle. <coughs> Excuse me. His eyes were like fiery flame, and on his head were many royal crowns, and he had a name written which no one knew but himself. He was wearing a robe that had been soaked in blood, <clears throat> and the name by which he was called, the Word of God. The armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses, and out of his mouth comes a sharp sword to, and with which to strike down nations. He will rule them with the staff of iron. It is he who treads the winepress from which flows the wine, a furious rage of Adonai, God of heaven's armies, and on his robe, on his thigh, he has the name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen? Amen. Let's look at verse 7 and 8, please. Veamos al verso siete y ocho. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us give him the glory, for the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean, has been given her to wear. Amen? Amen. Prepare. What does that mean? Prepárense. ¿Qué significa? What does it mean for the bride to prepare? ¿Qué significa para la novia prepararse? Does that mean we should all be going to the gym and working out? ¿Significa que tenemos que ir al gimnasio y prepararnos? Should we all be losing weight? ¿Deberíamos perder de peso? What does it mean to prepare for the return of Messiah? ¿Qué significa prepararse para el retorno del Mesías? You're preparing for that time to be with him. Te estás preparando para ese tiempo para estar con él. Now these people that we read about in the book of Revelation. De esta gente que ve vemos en el libro de Revelación. These people are at the banquet. Esta gente está en el banquete. Who are these people? ¿Quiénes son estas personas? These people are let into the holy place. Estas personas son llevadas al lugar santo. They went beyond the third veil. Ellos pasaron el tercer velo. They went from the outer courts. Sale, eh, fueron desde la parte de afuera. They went out from the world in that broad road. Se alejaron del mundo en ese camino ancho. They went through that 30 foot gates. Entraron por esa puerta de 30 pies. They made their offerings. Hicieron su ofrenda. They, they went through the mikvah. They washed themselves. Se lavaron ellos mismos. Then they went into that room. Y después entraron a la habitación. Where those three holy objects were. Donde hay los tres objetos santos. And then they went in to that final place y a ese lugar final. where they would be with the word of God. Que con la del Señor. And God would speak to them from above the Ark of the Covenant. What is speaking? ¿Qué Words. Palabras. The word of God spoke. La palabra de Dios hablando. Look at verse 8. Veamos el verso 8. Fine linen, bright and clean, has been given her to wear. Amen? Amen. Fine linen was what the high priest, the Kohen Hagadol, would wear when he went to the holy place. Lino fino era lo que el Kohen Hagadol estaba vestido. 
Who's wearing linen today? ¿Quién se viste de lino hoy? I'm wearing linen today. Yo estoy puesto lino hoy. My talit is made of linen. Mi talit es hecho de lino. The talits are made of linen. Los talits son hecho de lino. God's garments of, are made of linen. Las vestiduras de Dios son hechas de lino. If you want to go into that holy place, si quieres entrar a ese lugar santo, you must be clothed in his linen. Debes estar vestido en su lino. Look at verse 9, please. Veamos al verso 9. The angel said to me, Write how blessed are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Then he added, These are God's very words. Amen? Amen. God's very words. Las palabras del Señor. What did God speak from the mountain? ¿Qué habló Dios desde la montaña? I am the Lord thy God. Yo soy el Dios. You shall have no other gods beside my face. No debes tener otros dioses enfrente de mi cara. You shall keep the Shabbat holy. Debes mantener el Shabbat santo. Kadosh set aside. Kadosh apartado. This holy place. Este lugar santo. That's where that word was kept. Ahí es donde la palabra fue guardada. This was set aside. Esa fue apartada. This is what the book of Revelation is talking about. De eso habla el libro de Revelación. These are God's very words. Estas son las palabras del Señor. But you don't get to go there. Pero no vas a poder ir ahí. Unless you follow Matthew chapter 7. Si no sigues Mateo 7. Going through the narrow road. Y ir por el camino estrecho. And only a few find it. Y solo unos, un pocos lo encuentran. These are what the words are speaking in the book of Revelation. Estas son las palabras que se hablan en Revelación. Getting to go into the most holy play, Llegar a place. Llegar al lugar más santo. This is for those who follow the narrow path. Esto es para los que siguen el camino muy angosto. And it is Yeshua that said only a few find it. Y es Yeshua quien dijo que solo unos pocos lo encontraban. How many people want to find the road? ¿Cuántos quieren encontrar esa ruta? I want to be on that road. Yo quiero estar en esa ruta. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow, 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 follow. That's what he's talking about. Eso está hablando. Okay? That's before they did more acid. <laughs> the guys who wrote The Wizard of Oz were doing LSD, okay? Remember that. Okay. Okay? Yeah, they were when they were writing it. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Read the, 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 yeah, they were doing drugs. That's why things look the way they do in The Wizard of Oz. Ah. Okay? Yes. I always thought about that. <laughs> But following the yellow brick road is God, going to God's house. Seguir el camino de, la, de, la, de los uh, bloques es el camino de Dios. Because even in a bad situation, God is trying to show his path. Porque incluso en el mal tiempo Dios está tratando de mostrar el camino. Even in your worst time. Incluso en el momento más más uh, malo. God will show you his path to get out of it. Dios te mostrará su camino para salirte de él. If you're willing to listen. Si estás dispuesto a escuchar. Listen to the donkey. A escuchar al burrito. As you get to that more narrow path. Así mientras vas llegando a ese camino más estrecho. Because, look at verse 13. Porque veamos al verso 13. He was wearing a robe that had been soaked in blood, and the name by which he was called is the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Or, this is also a Jew writing this. Esto es un judío escribiendo también. Let's now reread verse 13. Veamos otra vez el verso 13. He was wearing a robe that had been soaked in blood, and the name by which he was called is the Torah of God. Amen? Amen. The Amen. Torah of God. La Torah de Dios. In the beginning was the Torah, and the Torah was with God, and the Torah was God. En el comienzo fue la Torah, y la Torah fue Dios, y la Torah es Dios. Amen? This is what Yochanan is saying here. Esto es lo que Yochanan está diciendo aquí. What did the Kohen Hagadol have to do before he went into the holy place? ¿Qué es lo que el Kohen Hagadol tenía que hacer antes de entrar al lugar santo? He was, had to get all the blood off of him. Tenía que quitarse toda la sangre de encima de él. From the offering that was in the sacrifice area. De la ofrenda que fue hecha en el área del sacrificio. So he could be face to face with the Lord. Así puede estar cara a cara con el Señor. And it all depends what you put in this box. Y todo depende de qué es lo que te pones en esta cajita. Part 3 in the box. Parte, parte tres, la cajita. If you are the temple of God, si estás en el templo de Dios, what is inside of you? ¿Qué está dentro de ti? Or in a different way, en una manera diferente, if this is a box, si esta es una caja, What is in your box? ¿Qué está de tu caja? Well, in Jen's box right now is little Hannah. <laughs> she's baking. She's almost done. Almost. Okay. 
What is in your box? ¿Qué está dentro de tu caja? There has to be certain things that are in this box. Unas cosas deben estar en esa caja. Things that he loves. Cosas que él ama. And that meet his standards. Y que alcanzan sus estándares. You want to see some examples of what was in the box? ¿Quieres ver ejemplos de lo que había en la caja? You want to see some examples? ¿Quieres ver ejemplos? Turn to Genesis chapter 7, please. Genesis, Bereshit 7. Vámonos a Génesis 7. Bereshit 7. The living <laughs> Genesis 7, we're going to look at verse 1 through 10. Genesis 7, del 1 al 10. Bereshit, in the beginning. All right, everybody got it? Amen. Okay. And I said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, for I've seen that you alone in this generation are righteous before me. Of every clean animal you are to take seven couples, and of the animals that are not clean, one couple. Also... Of the birds in the air take seven couples in order to preserve their species throughout the earth. For in seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights. I will wipe out every living thing that I have made from the face of the earth. Noah did all that Adonai ordered him to do. Noah was six hundred years old when the water flooded the earth. Noah went into the ark with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives because of the flood waters. Of clean animals, of the animals that are not clean, of the birds and everything that creeps on the ground, couples, male and female, went into went into the uh, Noah in the ark, went into Noah in the ark as God had ordered Noah. After seven days, the water flooded the earth. Amen. Amen. Look at verse one, please. Vamos al verso uno. Uh, and I said to Noah, "Come into the ark, you and all your household, for I've seen that you alone in this generation are righteous." Before me, amen. What was in this gigantic, gigantic floating box? ¿Qué estaba dentro de esta caja flotante? Remember, the ark is not a boat. Recuerden que el arca no es un bote. It's a gigantic box. Es una caja gigante. It's a floating box. Es una caja flotante. Why is it not a a a, a boat? Porque no es un bote. Because there's nothing steering it. Porque no tiene timón. It just goes where God wanted it to go. Solo va por donde Dios quiere que vaya. So what was in this gigantic box? ¿Qué había dentro de esta caja gigante? Adonai put one family in this box. Adonai puso una familia en esta caja. Only one family met God's standards at that time. Solo una familia eh, alcanzó los estándares de Dios en ese tiempo. Only one family was found to be righteous in, on all the planet at that time. Solo una familia fue encontrada justa en ese planeta, en el planeta. If God were to flood the earth today, si Dios eh, inundaría la tierra hoy, would you be found in that box? Estarías tú en esa caja. Would you be found in the box? Would you be going into that holy place? That's where you want to get to. That narrow, narrow path. Look at verse 10, please. After seven days, the water flooded the earth. Amen? So inside the box were the things that God loved. That he set aside. Que él separó. And outside the box y fuera de la caja, were those that were not found righteous. Estaban los que no fueron encontrados justos. After you leave the broad road Después de que dejas el camino ancho, and you enter in that 30 foot gate y entras por esa puerta de 30 pies, you start to walk with God. Comienzas a caminar con el Señor. But that's just the beginning. Pero ese es solo el comienzo. You want to be in the Box. Quieres estar en la caja. In that small space. En ese espacio pequeño. With the word of God. Con la palabra de Dios. Being face to face with you. Estando cara a cara contigo. Now, people say we're under grace. La gente dice que estamos bajo gracia. I would just like to remind you. Me gustaría recordarte. That when God flooded the earth. Que cuando la tierra, que cuando Dios inundó la tierra. We were under grace. Estuvimos bajo gracia. Because Torah had not been written Por, in paper form. Porque la Torah no estaba escrita en papel. Outside of that box. Fuera de esa caja. Was people that did not love God. Había gente que no amó a Dios. And he washed the world clean. Y él lavó el mundo para limpiarlo. Go back one slide please. Salvation is at the door. 
La salvación está a la puerta. You offer yourself as a sacrifice to God. Te ofreces, te ofreces como sacrificio a Dios. You wash yourself clean in the mikvah. Tú te lavas con el mikvah. Then you get in the box with God. Y entras a la caja con el Señor. Let's say that again. Digamos esto otra vez. Outside here is the broad road. Afuera está la puerta, la, el camino ancho. You enter in salvation. Entras a salvación. Into a holy relationship with God's house. En una relación in, uh, uh, santa con el Señor. And the owner of the house. Y el dueño de la casa. You sacrifice your old life for a new life. Sacrificas tu vida vieja por nueva. You go through the mikvah. Te pasas por el mikvah. And let the dove descend upon you. Y dejas que, la, que el ave descienda sobre ti. You go beyond that next veil. Vas de, pasas este nuevo velo. Into a holy relationship with the Lord. A la relación santa con el Señor. Outside the box in Genesis. Afuera de la caja en Genesis. Were the people that did not want to have a relationship with God. Estaba la gente que no quería tener relación con Dios. So, so the Lord washed that all away. El Señor le... Uh, Borró todo eso. But sometimes we fight inside ourselves, don't we? Y hay veces que peleamos dentro de nosotros. I don't want to do that anymore. No quiero hacer esto más. That rabbi is so mean to me. El rabino está malo conmigo. He's telling me I can't eat the pork or some other silly thing like that again. Me está diciendo que no puedo comer puerco o cosas así. Sometimes we have internal fights, right? Muchas veces tenemos uh, peleas um, internas. Even after we receive a promise. Incluso después de recibir una promesa. Turn to Genesis 25. Vámonos a Génesis 25. Genesis 25. Getting anything today? Amen. It's a very uh, intricate message, don't you think, from the es Lord? Un mensaje muy intrigoso del Señor, ¿verdad? And it all started when the Lord showed me the, the parash reading. Y todo comenzó cuando el Señor me mostró la lectura del parasha. And he sp spoke about that holy place. Y Dios habló del lugar santo. But sometimes we fight inside ourselves, right? Pero hay veces que peleamos dentro de nosotros. Genesis Bereshit 25, verse 19 through 26. Genesis 25, del 19 al 26. Here's the history of Yitzhak, Abraham's son, Abraham fathered Yitzhak. Yitzhak was 40 years old when he took Rivka, the daughter of Bituel, the Arami, from Padan Aram, the sister of Levan the Arami, to be his wife. Yitzhak prayed to Adonai on behalf of his wife because she was childless. Adonai heeded his prayer and Rivka became pregnant. The children fought with each other inside of her so much that she said, It's gonna be like this why go on living. So she went to inquire of Adonai, who answered her, There are two nations in your room. From birth they will be two rival peoples. One of these people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time for her delivery came, there were twins in her womb. The first came, uh, to come out was reddish and covered all over with hair like a coat. So they named him Esau. Then his brother emerged with his hand holding Esau's heel, so he, called, uh, so he was called Yaakov. Yitzhak was 60 years old when she bore them. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 22. Vamos al verso 22. The children fought with each other inside her so much that she said, It's going to be like this way, go on living. So she went to inquire about an eye. Amen? Amen. I think Jen's feeling this right now. Amen. It's going to be like this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but for 20 years, she was not pregnant. Por 20 años, ella no tuvo hijos. Not Jen. No, yeah. <laughs> Rivka, for 20 years, was not pregnant. Rebecca por 20 años no tenía hijos. So Yaakov prayed for his wife. Jacob oró por su esposa. And then she's pregnant for the first time. Y ella se embarazó por la primera vez. And these kids are fighting inside of her. Y estos niños están peleando dentro de ella. But she had the promise of God. Pero tiene la promesa de Dios. We have the promises of God, people. Tenemos la promesa de Dios. In Deuteronomy 28, en Deuteronomio 28, God says, do these little rules, Dios dice, haz estas pequeñas reglas, and y'all gonna have a good life. Y todos van a tener una vida buena. You'll be able to sit back there on your porch and just sit there. Yep, Lord's blessing me. Yeah, vas a poder estar sentado tranquilo que el Señor te bendice. Y'all come over here now and then talk to you about the Bible. Nuevamente voy a hablar de la Biblia. You got the promises of God. Vas a tener las promesas de Dios. But do we fight inside of our own selves? Pero peleamos dentro de nosotros. Do I got to do this? Do I not got to do this? <laughs> and we fight with God. Tengo que hacer esto o no, te peleamos con Dios. Even though we have the promises of God. Aunque tenemos la promesa del Señor. So did 
the two in Rivka's womb. Así hicieron los hijos de Rivka en el vientre. You know, they're going around in there and... Y se movían por todo lado. Oh, oh, it's going to be like this. Why am I not living, she says. Si, si, voy a, si va a ser así, ¿para qué vivo yo? You know? Now watch Jen when she walks later on today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to make you self-conscious, but that kid's coming next week. <laughs> you know? So, why go on living? I'm waddling. <laughs> you know, but do we fight with God? Peleamos con Dios. Do we say why go on living? Nosotros le decimos a Dios por qué sigo viviendo. Do we have internal fight inside of this box? Tenemos peleas internas dentro de esta caja. Turn to Luke chapter 24, please. Vamos a Lucas 24. One more example of in the box. Un ejemplo más de la caja. Luke 24, please. How long am I in there, uh, tech team? 1.30. Ah, oh, cool. Now it's about 10 to 2. Ah. Luke chapter 24. Lucas 24. Verse 13 through 32. Del 13 al 32. Luke 24, verse 13 through 32. Lucas 24, el 13 al 32. The same day, two of them were going toward the, a village about seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Yeshua himself came up and walked along with them. But something kept them from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you talking about with each other as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. And one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only person staying in Jerusalem that doesn't know the things that have been going on there the last few days? What things? He asked them. They said to him, The things about Yeshua from Nazareth. He was a prophet and proved it by the things he did and said before God and all the people. Our head Kohanim and their leaders handed him over so that he could be sentenced to death and executed on a stake as a criminal. And he had hoped, and we had hoped, that he would be the one to liberate Israel. Mm. Besides all that, today is the third day since these things happened. And this morning, some of the women astounded us. They were at the tomb early and couldn't find his body, so they came back. And, but they also reported that they had seen a vision of angels who say he's alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women had said, but they didn't see him. He said to them, foolish people, so unwilling to put your trust in everything the prophet spoke. Didn't the Messiah have to die like this before entering his glory? Then, starting with Moshe and all the prophets, he explained to them the things that can be found throughout the Tanakh concerning himself. They approached the village where they were going. He made as if he were going on further, but they held him back saying, stay with us for it's almost evening and it's getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. As he was reclining with them at the table, he took the matzah, made a bracha, broke it and handed it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he, came, but he became invisible to them. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn inside of us as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Torah to us? Amen. 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 Look back at verse 13, please. Vamos al verso 13. That same day, two of them were going toward a village about seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. Amen. Amen. This is what our television show is called in the Philippines. Así es como se llama el show en las Filipinas. It's called the road to Emmaus. Se llama la ruta a Emmaus. You know, sometimes after a traumatic event, a veces después de un uh, evento traumático, like what was going on with these two disciples, como lo que pasó con estos dos discípulos. You remember, their leader had been killed. Su líder fue matado. They thought that he was going to liberate them from the Romans, as it just said there. Ellos pensaron que los iba a liberar de los romanos. They were downcast. Estaban tristes. So inside of them, there must have been going on a lot of great turmoil, right? Dentro de ellos quizá había mucha confusión. Put yourself in that position. Ponte en esa posición. You knew the truth. Sabías la verdad. But you were un 
sure of that truth. Pero no estaba seguro de esa verdad. Was this really true that Yeshua rose from the grave? Fue realmente verdad que Yeshua se levantó de la muerte. And you're having that internal fight inside this box. Y tienes esta pelea interna dentro de la caja. You had heard that he rose from the grave. Escuchaste que se levantó de la tumba. But you, you're like, is it really true? Pero tú estás preguntando si es verdad. But you're on the road. Pero estás en el camino. Hearing, this guy comes up to you. Este hombre que viene y se acerca a ti. And he's telling you everything that was supposed to happen. Look at verse 16. Vamos al verso 16. But something kept them from recognizing him. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you're told the truth. You're told the truth. Hay veces que te han dicho la verdad. Like, you have to leave the broad road. De que tienes que dejar el camino ancho. You have to come beyond that first veil. Tienes que pasar el primer punto de, de, de la puerta ancha. You have to come to a narrower road. Tienes que llegar a una ruta angosta. You got to give up things in your life that are not of God. Tienes que dejar cosas de tu vida que no eran de Dios. You got to come to this altar. Tienes que llegar a este altar. You have to sacrifice your old life for something new. Tienes que sacrificar tu vida anterior por algo nuevo. And people, uh, you know, I'm telling you that this is what the Lord wants from you. Y te digo, esto es lo que Dios quiere de ti. Well, aren't you part of a cult? No eres parte de un culto? No, I like the cowboys. A me gustan los cowboys. Oh, uh, that's an American joke. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and people tell you, well, we don't got to do those things anymore. Y usted, la gente te dice que no tenemos que hacer esto más. But you're, you're knowing something is right here. Pero sabes que algo está aquí. Everything that comes from this pulpit is scriptural. Que todo lo que sale de este púlpito es de escritura. Even when I use myself as an example of what was and what is today. Incluso lo que yo utilizo mi, mi, mi persona como ejemplo de lo que fui it y is, lo que soy. It is not to pump me up. No es para levantarme yo. It is to show you that I was there. Estoy mostrándote que yo estuve ahí. And there is nothing you could tell me that's going to freak me out. Y no hay nada que me puedas decir que me va a volver loco. Most likely I've already been there and I've already done it. Ma, quizá lo hice y ya lo, ya lo he hecho. But when you begin to recognize something. Pero cuando comienzas a reconocer. You know, when I began to recognize the things of the Lord. Cuando comencé a reconocer las cosas del Señor. You know, the, the full stocked bar. El bar. That was... Right here. Que estaba, que era de ese tamaño. This was the bar. Este era el bar. This is where everything was stored. Aquí es donde todo estaba guardado. There was another shelf here. Había otra vitrina ahí. And right where Torah is stored now. Ahí donde la Torah está ahora. Was 60 year old scotch. Había un scotch de 60 años. Was wild turkey. Uh, wild turkey. Southern comforts. Southern comfort. All sorts of alcohols. Todo tipo de alcohol. Was stored right where our Torah is stored Estu now. Estuvo guardado ahí donde ahora está la Torah. But as I, I began to recognize things, you know, things stirred in here. Cuando comencé a reconocer cosas, uh, tenía una lucha dentro. You know, as Playboy magazine would still come to my house. Uh, revistas de Playboy venían a mi casa. Wow, look at that artwork. Ooh, goodness gracious, golly gee, Willikers, Batman. It's just artwork. God made a beautiful body. Yeah. Do you want me to translate that? Yes. <laughs> no, because especially Latin men, you need to translate that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rabina, uh, que es una revista de Playboy, pero muchos, muchos, este tienen uh, de, es um, excusa de que es arte, de que Dios hizo un hermoso cuerpo. But as I began, this thing stirred in myself and not sexual. Pero cuando comenzaron las cosas a envolverse aquí dentro. Something began to stir. Algo comenzó a moverse. You put that away. Y ponía eso a un lado. Just like the men on the road to Emmaus. Así como estos hombres en la ruta de Emmaus. They began to hear. Comenzaron a escuchar. And they were wanting to recognize something. Y querían reconocer algo. But they had not gone beyond that third curtain just yet. Pero no habían llegado a esa tercera cortina aún. Look at verse 32, please. Veamos al verso 32. They said to each other, didn't our hearts burn inside us as he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us. Amen? Amen. 
When I'm telling you the words of God, cuando te estoy diciendo las palabras de Dios, from a biblical perspective, de una perspectiva bíblica, sometimes it burns in you. Hay veces que quema dentro de ti. Well, we don't have to do those things anymore. No tenemos que hacer esto más. You know, we've had people come through these doors. Hemos tenido gente que ha entrado por esas puertas. So one woman said, we don't got to do the Torah anymore, but we'll do Shabbat. Una mujer dijo que no tenemos que seguir la Torah, pero tenemos que seguir el Shabbat. And why do Shabbat? ¿Y por qué seguir el Shabbat? So here, these two in the road to Emmaus. Estos dos en la ruta de Emmaus. The Lord was speaking to them. El Señor les estaba hablando a ellos. Telling everything about himself. Diciéndoles todo acerca de él. But they're just dumb shape. Pero estaban así atontados. Our hearts stirred in us. I'm sorry. Our hearts stirred in us. Oh, nuestro corazón está ardiendo. And he was speaking the truth. Y nos estaba hablando la verdad. But I just didn't understand it then. Pero no entendieron. But then, when their eyes are open. Pero cuando los ojos se abrieron, their hearts began to know the truth. Sus corazones comenzaron a ver la verdad. That's why it said in Psalm 119. Por eso dice en Salmo 119. Don't forget the words of Torah. No te olvides las palabras del Torah. In the beginning was the Torah. En el comienzo fue la Torah. And the Torah was with God. Y la Torah estuvo con Dios. And the Torah was God. Y la Torah es Dios. Let it burn inside of your hearts. Déjale que se queme dentro de tu corazón. Because the road is broad. Porque la, el camino es ancho. But the gate is narrow. Pero la puerta es estrecha. When you get to that third gate. Cuando llegas a la tercera puerta. And you want to enter into that gate. Y quieres entrar a esa puerta. You want to be face to face with your God. Quieres estar cara a cara con tu Dios. You want to be alone with your God. Quieres estar solo con tu Dios. And the only way you can do that. Y el único manera que puedes hacer eso. Is you got to leave the broad road. Es que debes dejar el camino ancho. You got to come into that next curtain there. Entrar por esa cortina. You got to keep walking. Tienes que seguir caminando. You got to keep walking. Ni seguir caminando. Now sometimes you make a detour. Hay veces que tú te de desvías. Sometimes you make another detour. Te desvías otra vez. But you want to get ultimately. Pero quieres llegar. To that holy place. A ese lugar. And you don't know when you're going to die. Y no sabes cuándo vas a morir. You don't know if a bomb goes off, boom, we're all dead. No sabes si va a caer una bomba y todos nos morimos. I know where I'm going to wake up. Yo sé dónde me voy a despertar. Because I have been promised that. Porque ya me han prometido eso. Matthew 5, verse 17 to 19 says, Mateo, My promise. Mateo 5, 17, 19 dice, Mi promesa. Great are those who teach God's law. Grandes son los que enseñan la ley de Dios. I want to sit at that table. Quiero sentarme en esa mesa. If I'm going to go through all this hell, I'd rather sit at the table. Si voy a ir por todo este infierno, prefiero estar en la mesa. Imagine you're sitting at the wedding feast of the Lamb. Imagínate sentarte en la mesa de la fiesta del Señor. Man, she was sitting there, pop sitting there, the Ruach HaKadet, and you get to sit right there. Yeshua ahí, eh, papá ahí, y el Ruach HaKadet, y tú te puedes sentar ahí. Three curtains. Tres cortinas. Three in one. Tres en una. All found in Genesis 1. Todas encontradas en Genesis 1. Three curtains. Tres cortinas. Three in one. Tres en una. All found in Genesis 1. Otras encontradas en Genesis 1. I'm going to coin that phrase. Thank Me, you. That was nice. You want to get to that holy place. Quieres llegar a este lugar santo. Even if you make a couple of detours. Incluso si te desvías a veces. Get on that narrow road now. Regresa a ese camino estrecho ahora. Remember, you don't want the donkey to start speaking to you. No quieres que el burrito comience a hablar contigo. Didn't you see the angel? No viste el ángel. If I had a, then Balaam starts talking to the donkey. Y Balaam comienza a hablar con el burrito. I mean, most of us would stop at that point. Muchos de nosotros pararíamos en ese momento. You're talking. Estás hablando. Donkey, shut up! Burrito, cállate. <laughs> yeah, well, you're talking to the donkey. Estás hablando con el burrito. And the donkey's saying. Y el burrito te dice. Don't you see the angel in front of y'all? No ves el ángel que está enfrente tuyo. Y'all been riding me all your life. 
Está, has estado cabalgando todo el tiempo. And you've been gaining weight. <laughs> you know, and there you are. Y ahí estás tú. And the donkey's talking to you. Y el donkey, eh, digo, el burrito te habla. Well, the Lord's trying to talk to us today, people. Y el Señor nos está tratando de hablar hoy. He wants us to know about the holy place. Quiere que sabemos, sepamos del lugar santo. Part 4, the holy place. Parte 4, el lugar santo. Turn to Matthew chapter 26, please. Vamos a Mateo 26. Matthew 26, please. 26. 26, por favor. Bavakasha. Tota. Tota. Matthew 26, verse 61 through 64. 61 al 64. Ah, got it. Not to 60. I don't know what 70 is. 70. <laughs> no, 60. 60. No, 60. What's 60? 60 is 60. So that's what I said. I don't know what 70 is. 70. 70? With T. Oh, okay. It's close. Yeah. All right, Matthew 26, Mateo. verse 61 through 64. Mateo 26, del 61 al 64. See, sí. this man said, I can tear down God's temple and build it again in three days. The Kohen Haggadol stood up and said, Have you nothing to say to the accusations these men are making? Yeshua remained silent. The Kohen Haggadol said to him, I put, put you under oath by the living God, Tell us if you are the Mashiach, the Son of God. Yeshua said to him, The words are your own, but I tell you that one day you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of Hagravura and coming on the clouds of heaven. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 64, please. Veamos al verso 64. Yeshua said to him, The words are your own, but I tell you that one day you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of Hagravura and coming on the clouds of heaven. Amen? Amen. That word there in Hebrew, Esa palabra en hebreo, or in the Greek, o en el griego, is the word do, uh, uh, for strength and power. Es de poder y fuerza. Okay, when Yeshua said, I am sitting at the right hand Cuando Yeshua dice, Estoy sentado a la derecha, a la diestra, of the one of strength del que and tiene, power del que tiene fuerza y poder, and ability. Y habilidad. That's what he was saying. Eso es lo que él decía. But specifically, he said he's at the right hand. Específicamente él decía que estaba a la mano derecha. Not the left hand. No a la mano izquierda. Because he's quoting from Psalm 110, verse 1. Porque él está llamando a Salmo 110, verso 1. Where it says, the Lord said to my Lord. Cuando dice el Señor, le dijo a mi Señor. Sit at my right hand. Siéntate en mi mano derecha. As I make your enemies a footstool. Como haz, hago tu, de tus enemigos una, una, um, un banco. But there's layers to everything here. Pero hay uh, capas aquí. Now, Messiah Yeshua has a few titles. Eh, Yeshua Mesías tiene muchos títulos. And light of the world is one of them. Luz del mundo es uno de esos. Why is he the light of the world? Porque él es la luz del mundo. Why does he say I sit at the right hand? Porque él está sentado a la diestra. Turn back to Exodus chapter 25, please. Vámonos a Éxodo 25. Exodus 25, please. Éxodo 25. Verse 23 through 30. Del 23 al 30. 23 al 30. Exodus 25, verse 23 to 30. Exodus 25, del 23 al 30. Everybody got it? Say amen, please. Amen. You are to make a table of acacia wood three feet long, 18 inches wide, and 18 inches high. Overlay it with pure gold and put a molding of gold around the top of it. Make around, make around it a rim of handbreadth wide and put a molding of gold around the rim. Make four gold rings for it and attach the rings to the four corners near its four legs. The rings to hold the poles used to carry the table to be placed close to the rim. Make the poles of acacia wood. Overlay them with gold. Use them to carry the table. Make its dishes, pans, bowls, and pitchers of pure gold. On the table you are to place the bread of the presence in my presence always. Hey, skip over to chapter 26. Vamos al capítulo 26. And then look at verse 35. Y veamos al, al verso 35. You are to put the table outside the curtain 
and the menorah opposite the table on the side of the tabernacle toward the south. Put the table on the north side. Amen? Amen. I want you to see something. Go to the, the slide with the Mishkan, Karn. Quiero que vean algo. I want you to see something. Everything's going to line up with Yeshua's words. Todo va a alinear con las palabras de Yeshua. When you, when you go into this place, cuando vas a este lugar, this would be on the north side. Esto estará en el lado norte. You go past this curtain. Pasas esta cortina. The bread of the presence is on the right. El pan de la, de la proposición está en la derecha. That was to be in front of God always. Esto tenía que estar en frente de Dios todo el tiempo. On the right hand side. En el lado derecho. What would be on the left hand side, on the south side? Que habría en el lado sur, en el lado izquierdo. The light from the pure one piece menorah. El aceite puro, la luz pura de la, de la menorah. And then we go a little further. Y pasamos un poquito más, más lejos. Here is the incense table. Está la mesa del incienso. Okay, I want, now we're going to go further. We're going to go deeper now. Vamos a ir un poco más profundo. Because remember, you're the temple of God. Recuerden que son el templo de Dios. Okay, so on the right hand is the, the side as you walk in. Mientras tú caminas a la derecha. Okay, you're walking, where, where's the picture? There's a picture on that side or this way? Okay. Okay, on the right-hand side en la mano derecha, is the table of the presence that would be like right here. Está la mesa del pan de la proposición. On the left-hand side, en la mano izquierda, en el lado izquierdo, there would be the light. Está la luz. Okay. Turn to John chapter 6, please. Vamos a Juan 6. John chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 43 through 51. Del 43 al 51. Juan, Yohanan, John. Juan 6. John, chapter 6, verse 43. Del 43. Through 51. Al 51. When you got to say amen, please. Amen. Yeshua answered them, stop grumbling to each other. No one can come to me unless the Father, the one who sent me, draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. <clears throat> At the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by Adonai. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from Him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Has, uh, he has seen the Father. Yes, indeed. I tell you, whoever trusts whoever trust has eternal life. I am the bread which is life. Your fathers ate the man in the desert. They died. But the bread that comes down from Heaven is such that a person may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that has come down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Furthermore, the bread that I will give is my own flesh, and I will give it for the life of the world. Amen? Amen. Look at 48 and 49. Vamos a 48 49. I am the bread which is life. Your fathers ate man in the desert. They die. Amen? Amen. Yeshua is pointing us back to the Mishkan. Yeshua nos está señalando al Mishkan. And the tabernacle, what would be stored in there? ¿Qué ahí en el tabernáculo? Yeshua said, I sit at the right hand of the Habgarah. Dijo Yeshua que él estaba sentado a la diestra del Padre. And I am the bread of life. Y soy el pan de la vida. As you walk in closer to God. Mientras caminas más cerca a Dios. What is on the right hand side? Está en el lado derecho. But when Yeshua says, Bro, go on the narrow road. Cuando Yeshua dice que vayas por el camino angosto. You got to have the bread of the presence. Tienes el pan de la, de la proposición. I am the bread of life, he Yo says. Yo soy el pan de vida. I sit at the right hand of the Father. Yo me siento al lado derecho del Padre. Who said, let there be light? ¿Quién dijo que haya luz? Father said, let there be light, and there was light. El Padre dijo que haya luz y hubo luz. In the beginning was the Torah, and the Torah was with God, and the Torah was God. En el comienzo era la Torah, la Torah con el Señor, y la Torah es por Dios. But only if you're on the narrow path. Pero si solo estás en el camino angosto. But if you're one of them Christians. Pero si eres uno de los cristianos. And uh, you say, but we don't need the... Uh, Old Testament no more. I don't know how you're going to know what's in this tabernacle and where it's placed. You got to go beyond that second curtain. 
Tienes que pasar después a la, a la segunda cortina. That narrow road. Ese, ese camino angosto. Look at verse 51. Vamos al verso 51. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Furthermore, the bread that I will give is my own flesh. I will give it for the life of the word, uh, world. Amen? Amen? He is the living bread. Él es el pan vivo. He said, I sit at the right hand of the Father. Él dice, yo me estoy sentando en el lado derecho del Padre. As you walk in, what would it be? Cuando, cuando, cuando entras, ¿qué va a ser? The right hand hand, the, uh, the, 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 yeah, la mano derecha. Okay. And then he talks about this bread coming down from heaven. Y habla del pan que baja del cielo. In Johan and John 6 here, he's talking about the bread from heaven. In Johan and uh, 6, six. In Johan and chapter 6 oh. here. In Johan and uh, capítulo 6, habla del pan que baja del cielo. He's talking about the bread that came down from heaven. Está hablando del pan que desciende del cielo. The manna. Del manna. Three things that are in the holy place. Tres cosas que hay en el lugar santo. What are they? ¿Qué son? The bread of the presence. El pan de la proposición. The light that lights the place. La luz que alumbra el lugar. And then the third one is the incense offering. Y la tercera es la ofrenda del incienso. Turn to John chapter 8, please. You want to go a little deeper? ¿Quieren ir un poco más profundo? You want to go a little deeper, Eduardo? Amen. Amen. Lev, you want to go deeper? Sure, she says. <laughs> John chapter 8. Two more, just turn over a couple of pages there. John 8. Juan 8. We're, we're going to look at verse 3 through 12. Juan 8 del 3 al 12. It's not that bad. It's almost done. The Torah <laughs> teaches in the Pirishim brought a wo in a woman who had been caught committing adultery and made her stand in the center of the group. Then they said to him, Rabbi, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in our Torah, Moshe commanded that such a woman be stoned to death. What do you say about it? They said this to trap him, so they might have grounds for bringing charges against him. But Yeshua bent down and began writing in the dust with his finger. Then they kept questioning him. He straightened up and said to them, The one of you who is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and wrote in the dust again. On hearing this, they began to leave one by one, the older ones first, until he was left alone with the woman still there. Standing up, Yeshua said to her, Where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. Yeshua said, Neither do I condemn you. Now go and don't sin anymore. Yeshua spoke to them again, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. Amen? Amen. Look, in, look at 5 and 6 again. Veamos al 5 y 6. Now, our Torah, now in our Torah, Moshe commanded that such a woman be stoned to death. What do you say about it? They said this to trap him, so that they might have ground for bringing charges against him. But, against him. but Yeshua bent down and began writing in the dust with his finger. Amen? Amen. He began to write in the dust. Why? Comenzó a escribir en la tierra. ¿Por qué? If you're writing in the dust, what are you doing? Si escribes en el suelo, ¿qué estás haciendo? Would you be pointing down? Estaría señalando para abajo. What did we learn last in last week's message in 369? ¿Qué aprendimos en el en el en el mensaje anterior? Okay, first let's ask the question. Primero preguntémonos. Where would they have brought this woman? What a, part of the temple? ¿A dónde trajimos a la mujer? De, ¿En qué parte del templo? The court of the women, right? La corte de las mujeres. Because if she was having relationships, she would be unclean. Porque si está teniendo relaciones, no estaba limpia. So Yeshua was writing in the dust. Yeshua está escribiendo en la tierra. And he's pointing downward. Y está señalando para abajo. What was underneath him? Que había abajo de él. What did we learn last week? Que aprendimos ayer. The salt momento. room was underneath him. El cuarto de la sala estaba abajo de él. He was pointing them back to Torah. Estaba señalándoles de vuelta a la Torah. What is in Torah about an adulterous woman? Que está hablando en el Torah acerca de una mujer adulta. How many people do you get to stone? ¿Cuántas personas tienes que matar? Two people. Dos. Because if there's only one person that's called something else, we're not going to get into that. Pero si es solo una persona es algo más y no vamos a llegar a eso. So he's pointing down, not once but twice. Él está señalando no solamente una vez, pero dos veces. But if You're not getting to the holy place. 
Pero no vas a llegar al lugar santo. If you're not following the narrow road, si no estás siguiendo el camino estrecho, he's trying to give you hints. Te está tratando de decir algo. No, picture this. Imagínate esto. Yeshua bends down. Yeshua se agacha. Most likely left-handed. Quizá izquierdo. <laughs> he's writing in the dust. Está escribiendo en la, en la tierra. Says uh, you should, uh, you know, stone this woman. No sé por qué debes apedrear uh, a esta mujer. Those without sin cast the first stone. Los que tienen, los que estén limpios de pecado, tienen la primera piedra. And he's pointing down. The older ones leave first. Los mayores dejan, se van primero. Hint, hint, hint. Te está enseñando algo, te está mostrando algo. So he's he's pointing down. Está señalando abajo. To what God had said in this holy place. Lo que Dios había dicho en este lugar santo. What was stored in that most holy place? ¿Qué estaba guardando en ese lugar más santo? The words of God. Las palabras de Dios. Look at verse 11 now. Vamos al verso 11. She said, no one, sir. Yeshua said, neither do I condemn you. Now go and don't sin any more. Amen? Amen. This lets us know that the woman was sinning. Esto nos deja saber que la mujer estaba pecando. Because he didn't say, uh, well, you know, there were no charges really against you. Y di, eh, porque no dice, no hubieron cargos en contra de ti. So the Lord is saying, learn our lessons. Entonces el Señor dice, aprende las lecciones. Get on that narrow, narrow road. Ubícate en ese camino angosto. Look at verse 12. Veamos al verso 12. Because he said about the woman, don't sin anymore before he says this. Cuando le dijo esto de la mujer, no peque más, él dice esto. Yeshua spoke to them, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light which gives life. Amen? Amen. He said, he's the light of the world. Él está diciendo que es la luz del mundo. He speaks of a separation between the world and the light. Habla de una separación entre el mundo y la luz. What three things are in the holy place, Car Clarabel? ¿Qué tres cosas estaban en el lugar santo? Le pan, el pan. la luz... I don't know how to say incense. Incienso. Incencia. Le, le pan de Dios, la luz de Dios, de incencia de Dios. Amen? Amen. That's what's in the place. Eso es lo que estaba en el lugar. But if, you're, if you don't have the light, Pero si no tiene la luz. he said, I am the light of the world. Dice, Yo soy la luz del mundo. Look at, let's go back to Exodus chapter 25. Vámonos a Exodus 25. You learning anything today? Amen. Exodus 25, we're going to look at verse 31 through 40. Exodus 25, del 31 al 40. You are to make the menorah pure gold. It is to be made of hammered work. Its base, shaft, cups, rings, and outer leaves and petals are to be of one piece with it. It is to have six branches extending from its sides, three branches of the menorah on one side and three on the other side. On one branch are to be three cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with a ring of outer leaves and petals likewise on the opposite branch three cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with a ring of outer leaves and petals, and similarly for all six branches extending from the menorah. On the central shaft of the, menor of the menorah are to be four cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with its ring and outer leaves and petals, where each pair of branches join the central shaft to be a ring and the outer leaves of one piece with a pair of branches, thus for all six branches. The rings of the outer leaves and their branches are to be one piece with the shaft, Thus, the whole menorah is to be a single piece of hammered work made of pure gold. Make seven lamps for the menorah and mount them so that to give light into the space in front of it, its tongue strays are to be pure gold. The menorah and its utensils are to be made of 66 pounds of pure gold. See that you make them according to the design being shown You on the mountain. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 36. Vamos al verso 36. The rings of outer leaves and their branches are to be one piece with the shep. Thus the whole menorah is to be a single piece of hammered work made of pure gold. Amen? Amen. Hammered. Why? Martillo. ¿por Oscar, qué? what do you do with a hammer? ¿Qué haces con el martillo? You bang things in, right? Uh, golpeas para que cosas entren dentro de la pared. Oscar doesn't use a nail gun. He's old-fashioned. He uses a hammer. Oscar no utiliza una máquina de... de, 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 de um, okay. <laughs> de clavos. 
It's going to be hammered. Va a ser un martillo. How did they put Yeshua on the cross? ¿Cómo pusieron a Yeshua en la cruz? How did they nail the light of the world to the cross? ¿Cómo martillaron la luz del mundo a la cruz? They hammered him there. Lo martillaron ahí. With a hammer. Con un martillo. Then he was one piece. Él era una pieza nada más. He was the pure word of God. Era la palabra pura de Dios. In the beginning was the Torah and the Torah was with God and the Torah was God. En el comienzo era la Torah, la Torah estuvo con Dios y la Torah fue Dios. No additives, no preservatives. No aditivos ni preservativos. Well, how do you say pure in Hebrew? ¿Cómo dices puro en hebreo? Tahor. Tahor. Everyone want to say tahor? Tahor. You want a left tahor. You want a pure heart. Quieres un corazón puro. Tahor means pure, clean. Tahor significa puro o limpio. Yeshua said, I am the light of the world. Yeshua dice, yo soy la luz del mundo. He said, I am the bread of life. Yo soy el pan de vida. I am the light of the world. Soy la luz del mundo. Look at verse 40. Veamos al verso 40. See that you make them according to the design being shown to you on the mountain. Amen? Amen. God wants our lives designed by His way. Dios quiere nuestras vidas diseñadas en su camino. Not man-made ways. No hay maneras de hombre. Not rabbinic ways. No maneras rabínicas. God's ways and God's ways alone. Maneras de Dios y nada más. So we got the bread of the presence. Tenemos el pan de la presencia. We got the light of the world. Tenemos la luz del mundo. Jump over to Exodus chapter 30, please. Vámonos a Exodus 30. Exodus 30, please. Exodus 30. Cool, huh? I want to say something. <laughs> huh? Verse 1 through 7. Del 1 al 7. You are to make an altar on which to burn incense. Make it of acacia wood. It is to be 18 inches square and 3 feet high. Its thorns are, its horns are to be of one piece with it. Overlay it with pure gold. Its top all around its sides and its horns are to put around it a molding of gold. Make two gold rings for it under its molding at the two corners of both sides. This is where the carrying poles will go. Make the poles of acacia wood. Overlay them with gold. Place it in front of the curtain by the ark of the testimony, in front of the ark cover. That is over the testimony where I will meet with you. Aaron will burn fragrant incense on it as a pleasing aroma. Every morning he to burn it when he prepares the lamps. Amen? Amen. Look back at verse 1. Vamos de vuelta al verso 1. You are to make an altar on, to, on which to burn incense, incense. Make it of acacia wood. Amen? Amen. Burning incense. Ah, quemar incienso. Why are we burning incense? ¿Por qué se quemaría el incienso? Why would God have us burning incense in this holy place? ¿Por qué Dios tiene incienso quemándose en este lugar santo? Remember, after Noah, Noah got out of the ark. Recuerdan después de que Noé bajó del arca. What did he do? ¿Qué hizo él? An offering. Una ofrenda. And then God, what did God do? ¿Y qué hizo Dios? Oh, dear. oh, barbecue's back, baby. Yes! <laughs> God smelled the offering. Dios olió la ofrenda. And he, rem he was reminded about his love for us. Y fue recordado del amor por nosotros. About how we want to please him. Pero cómo podemos complacerle. Acacia wood. Why make it of acacia wood? ¿Por qué madera de acacia? Acacia wood is indestructible. La madera de acacia es indestructible. You can't break acacia wood. No puedes destruir la madera de acacia. And the ink that you get from acacia wood. Y la, la tinta que sacas de la madera de acacia. You know when, when you would get a, a writing quill. Cuando escribes algo. That ink will never ever fade. Esa tinta nunca se desvanecerá. So the byproduct of the acacia wood. El producto de la acacia. And how Torah would have been written. Y como la Torah fue escrita. Was from the ink of the acacia wood. Fue de la, de la tinta, de la de Look at verse 6 and 7, please. Vamos al verso y siete. Place it in front of the curtain by the ark of the testimony, in front of the ark cover that you that is over the testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron will burn fragrant incense on it as a pleasing aroma every morning. He is to burn it when he prepares the lamps. Amen? Amen. So right before Antes. you go 
You're real close to God's holiest place. Tú estás casi cerca del lugar santo de Dios. God Santísimo. wants you burning incense. Dios quiere que quemes incienso. To remind him of his blessings towards you. Para recordarle de sus bendiciones a ti. How do we offer incense to the Lord today? ¿Cómo ofrecemos incienso al Señor hoy? Our prayers are incense to the Lord. Nuestras oraciones son incienso al Señor. But it says in Proverbs 28:9. Pero dice en Proverbios 28:9. That if you do not follow Torah, que si no sigues la Torah, then your prayer is an abomination before the Lord. Tus oraciones son abominaciones al Señor. You want to go a little deeper? Find out about this incense table? Turn to Leviticus chapter 16, please. Vamos a Levítico 16. Couple more scriptures. Couple more scriptures. Told you it was going to be a lot today. Leviticus 16, please. Vayikra. Leviticus 16, we're going to look at verse 6 through 12. Leviticus 16, verse 6 al 12. Leviticus 16, verse 6 through 12. Aaron is to present the bull for the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and his household. He is to take the two goats and place them before Adonai at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then Aaron is to cast lots for the goats, one lot for Adonai and the other for the Azazel. Aaron is to present the goat whose lot fell to Adonai and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat whose lot fell to the Azazel is to be presented alive to Adonai, to be used for making atonement over, over it by sending it away to the desert for Azazel. Aaron is to present the bull of the sin offering for himself. He will make atonement for himself and his household. He is to slaughter the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself. He is to take a censer full of burning coals from the altar before Adonai with his hand full of ground fragrant incense bring it inside the curtain amen amen look at verse 8 please Vamos al verso ocho. then Aaron is to cast lots for the two goats the lot for Adonai and the other for the Azazel go back one slide Connor please he has to come to the entrance of the tent Cuando has a la, a la, a la tienda. and have the two goats y ha tenido las dos cabras. He is then to take one to cast a lot for. Uh, tiene que, eh, echar para una. And put it on the altar. Y en el altar. He is then to take the other goat. Entonces, él tomaría la otra cabra. At the entrance of the tent of meeting. A la entrada de la tienda de, 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 uh, reunión. And let the sin go back into the world. Y dejar que el pecado vaya al mundo. Okay, the two goats. Las dos machos cabríos. At the entrance of the tent of meeting. A la entrada de la mesa de la reunión, la tienda de reunión. One goes to the altar. Una va al altar. He then goes. Después va él. Here. Hasta aquí. Into the holy place. Hasta el lugar santo. Switch slides, please. Goes here. Él llega hasta aquí. He walks beyond the second curtain into the narrow path. Entra por la segunda cortina. Goes here. Ve hasta aquí. Get some incense. Toma algo de incienso. In a censer. En un uh, incensario. And he brings it before the Lord. Y lo trae al Señor. Why did we have the two goats? ¿Por qué tenemos los dos machos cabríos? Why did Yeshua get offered up? ¿Por qué Yeshua fue ofrecido? Pilate said what? Pilotos dijo qué. Do you want Yeshua, which is the king of the Jews? Quieren Yeshua, que es el rey de los judíos. Or do you want Baraba? O quieren Baraba. Yeshua, do you want salvation, the Melech Israel? Yeshua, quieren salvación, el Melech de Israel. Or do you want Baraba, the son of the father? O quieren Baraba, el, el hijo del padre. The choice is to let go. La, la, la opción es uh, dejar ir. Look at verse 12 now. Vamos al verso 12. He's to take a censer full of burning coals from the altar before Adonai, and with his hand full of ground fragrant incense, bring it inside the curtain. Bring it inside the curtain. Bring it inside the curtain. Oh, tráelo dentro de la cortina. Why is he bringing this inside the curtain? ¿Por qué lo debe traer dentro de la cortina? Which curtain? ¿Cuál cortina? This curtain. Esta cortina. To the most holy place. Al lugar más santo. With the incense. Con el incienso. What do you think the Catholics got that thing from? ¿De dónde crees que you ever see the Catholics doing the thing? Oh. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 
¿De dónde crees que los de los Jews? Obtuvieron el licenciario, sino de los judíos. That's where they're getting it from. De ahí es donde ellos lo tienen. So he's to take a, a censer full of the, the beautiful incense to God. Él debe tomar el incensario y, da, y dar el incienso al Señor. To remind God of his promises. Para recordar a Dios de sus promesas. Turn to Mark chapter 14. Vamos a Marcos 14. We're going to go a little deeper. Vamos a ver más, algo más profundo. You want to go deeper, everybody? Amen. I'm getting some good stuff out of today's message from the Lord. Amen. Si están teniendo un buen mensaje de aquí. No rabbinic stuff, just a straight word of God at this place, right? No cosas rabbinicas, sino cosas de Dios, nada más. Mark, chapter 14. Marcos 14. Verse 1 through 9. Del 1 al 9. When you got it, say amen, please. Amen. It was now two days before Pesach, and the head, Cohen, and the Torah teachers were trying to find some way to arrest Yeshua uh, surpositiously uh, and have him put to death. For they said, not during the festival or the people will riot. Well, he was in Beit Anya, in the home of Shimon, and as he was eating, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfume, pure oil of nard, very costly. She broke the jar and poured the perfume over Yeshua's head. But some there angrily said to themselves, Why is this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for a year's wages and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But he said, Let her be. Why are you bother bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing for me. For you will always have the poor with you, and whenever you want to, you can help them, but you will not always have me. What she could do, she did do in advance. She poured perfume on my body to prepare it for burial. Yes, I tell you that wherever in the whole world this good news is proclaimed, what she has done will be told in her memory. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 3. Vamos al verso 3. While he was in Beit Anya, in the home of Shimon, as he was eating, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfume, pure oil of nard, very costly. She broke the jar and poured the perfume over Yeshua's head. Amen? Amen. Why did she do this? ¿Por qué hizo esta bella? Well, one, the scent of nardo, Uno, el, spike el, nard, el aroma del nardo, is the scent of the bridegroom in the Song of Solomon. Es el aroma del novio en las Cantar de los cantares. Why else did she do it? ¿Por qué lo hizo también? What's the third piece in the holy place? ¿Cuál es la tercera pieza en el lugar santo? Incense. Incienso. What? When did you use the incense? ¿Cuándo utilizas el incienso? Before you went before the Lord to have your sins forgiven. Antes de, de, antes de entrar al Señor para tus pecados ser limpios. She had to put the nardo, the spike nard, over his head. El, ella tenía que poner el nardo sobre su cabeza. To remind the Lord of his promises. Para recordar al Señor de sus promesas. For he is the Azazel, the scapegoat being offered up. Porque él era el Azazel eh, que está ofrecido. When you go beyond the veil, Cuando ibas a pasar el velo, what tore in the temple when Yeshua gave up his life? ¿Qué se rompió en el templo cuando Yeshua dio su vida? The curtain ripped for what place? La cortina se rompió para qué lugar? That place. Para este lugar. Because he went beyond the veil. Porque él pasó más allá del velo. Because you want to be on the narrow road. Porque tú quieres estar en el camino angosto. Look at verse 8. What she could do, she did do in advance. She poured perfume on my body, preparing it for burial. Amen? Because he was going to be the offering. You want to go to the final part? Yes. You want to go to the final part? Turn back to Exodus 25, please. Exodus 25, please. We're going to look now at verse 8 through 16. Del verso 8 al 16. Shemot 25, verse 8 through 16. Exodus 25, del 8 al 16. They are to make me a sanctuary so that I may live among them. You are to make it according to everything I show you, the design of the tabernacle and the design of its furnishings. This is how you are to make it. They are to make an ark of acacia with three and three qu quarters feet long, 
two and a quarter feet wide and two and a quarter feet high. You are to overlay it with pure gold and overlay it both, side, both inside and out. Put it and put a molding of gold around the top of it. Cast four gold rings for it and attach them on the four feet, two rings on each side to make a poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Put the poles in the rings on the sides of the ark. We'll use them to carry the ark. The poles are to remain in the rings of the ark. They are not to be removed from it. Into the ark you are to put the testimony which I am about to give you. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 11. Vamos al verso 11. You are to overlay with pure gold, overlay it both inside and out, and put a molding of gold around the top of it. Amen? Amen. So here, you have the Ark of the Covenant. Entonces, pues aquí el arca del pacto. That was going to have the testimony that God was going to give. Que te iba a tener el testimonio que Dios iba a dar. This is after he has already given the Ten Commandments. Esto es después de lo que ya dio los diez mandamientos. So he's saying he's going to be giving us the whole Torah. Entonces dice que nos va a dar la Torah. The pure word of God. La palabra pura de Dios. That was going to be in a thing that was a pure gold. Que iba a estar en algo que era de puro oro. In the beginning was... The Torah and the Torah was with God and the Torah was God. En el principio fue la Torah, la Torah con Dios y la Torah fue Dios. And it had the acacia wood that lasts forever. Y tenía la madera de acacia que duraría por siempre. As Kepha was speaking about that we read. Así como Pedro estaba hablando de lo que leímos. Be thirsty for the pure milk sean, of the word. Sean sedientos por la leche pura de la palabra. Look at verse 22, please. Veamos al verso 22. There I will meet with you. I will speak with you from above the ark cover, from between the two, two cherubim, which are on the ark, for the testimony about all the orders I'm giving you for the people of Israel. So when you go to meet with the Lord, Cuando tú vas a encontrarte con el Señor, you have to go into that narrow place. Tienes que ir por ese camino angosto. The teachings of God so we can meet with you. Las enseñanzas del Señor así puede encontrarse contigo. Turn to Hebrews chapter 9, please. Vamos a Hebreos 9. Hebrews chapter 9, please. Hebreos 9. One of the most misunderstood books of the entire Bible. Uno de los libros menos entendidos de la Biblia. O Hebrews 9, please. Hebreos 9. How long am I in? 120. Oh. Two, what? 220. Okay. No, it's quarter to three. 220, 240, whatever it takes. Hi. Right. Hebrews 9, verse 1 through 4. I hope we got everything, so, a lot of good stuff today. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hebreos 9, del 1 al 4. 4. Now, the first covenant had both regulations for worship and a holy place here on earth. A tent was set up. The outer one, which was called the holy place, in it were the menorah, the table, and the bread of the presence. Beyond the second parachet was the tent called the holiest place, which had the golden altar for burning incense and the Ark of the Covenant entirely covered with gold. The Ark were, in the Ark, were the gold jar containing the mana, Aaron's rod that sprouted, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Amen? Amen. Look at verse 4 again. Veamos al verso 4. Underline verse 4. Y señal en el verso 4. Which had the golden altar for burning incense and the Ark of the Covenant, entirely covered with gold. In the Ark were the gold jar containing the maná, Aaron's rod that sprouted, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Amen? Amen. What were the three things that were in the Ark of the Covenant? ¿Qué eran las tres cosas que estaban en el Arca del Pacto? The bread el pan, that came down from heaven. Que bajó del cielo. The rod. La vara, which is the menorah that guides our lives. Que es la menorah que guía nuestras vidas, and the light. Y la luz, the thing of the testimony of God's word. La, la cosa del testimonio de la palabra de Dios. You had the three things in God's ark. Tenías estas tres cosas en el arca de Dios. You had the presence that came down from heaven in the ark. Tenías la presencia que bajaba del cielo al arca. You had the rod which it guides us. The rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Tenías la vara que nos conforma. Conform, conforma. And you had the word that was inside, the Torah that was inside. Y tenemos la palabra de Dios, la Torah, dentro del arca. Now finally, go back to Matthew 7. Ahora vámonos a Mateo 7. I think we will look at it in a whole different light now. Y yo creo que vamos a verlo de una manera diferente. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. 
Mateo 7 del... Uh, 13 and 14. 13 y 14. It says, go in through the narrow gate. For the gate that leads to destruction is wide, and the road broad, and many travel it. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Amen? Amen. God is looking for us today. Dios está buscando por nosotros hoy. To enter through the three curtains. Para entrar por las tres cortinas. To go beyond the veil. Para pasar el velo. To seek His holy presence. Para buscar su presencia santa. The road is broad, people. La ruta es ancha. There are many forms of Christianity out there. Hay muchas formas de cristianismo afuera. Many forms of Judaism out there. Mucha forma de judaísmo afuera. But there is only one way. Pero hay solo un camino. Only one truth. Solo una verdad. And only one way of living your life. Y una manera de vivir tu vida. You must go beyond the third curtain. Debes pasar la tercera cortina. To meet with God. Para encontrarte con el Señor. He's looking for you to make a straight path to His holiness today. Te está buscando para que sigas un camino derecho a su, a su, a su lugar santo. The road is broad. La ruta es ancha. But the gate is narrow. Pero la puerta es estrecha. And only a few find it. Y solo unos pocos la encuentran. Amen. 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 Why don't we just bow our hearts for a moment. Uh, inclinemos nuestro corazón por un momento. Thank you, Adonai, for your blessings today. Gracias, Adonai, por tus bendiciones hoy. Thank you for showing us the road, Yeshua. Gracias por mostrarnos la ruta, Yeshua. That you are everything that is in the tabernacle. Que tú eres todo lo que está en el tabernáculo. If you're out there, si tú estás afuera, and you realize today, y te has dado cuenta hoy, for the very first time, por la primera vez, that Yeshua is the only way to heaven. Que Yeshua es el único camino al cielo. I'm going to lead in a simple prayer Yo voy a en una simple. that you should say que debes decirla, but mean in your heart pero de say Yeshua, de Yeshua I'm sorry perdóname. I ask for your forgiveness te pido perdón. I have learned today He aprendido hoy that you are the one that's in the holy place. Que eres el único que está en el lugar santo. That you are the bread of the presence. Que tú eres el pan de la proposición. That you are the light of the world. Que eres la luz del mundo. That you are the incense that was offered up. Que eres el incienso que era ofrecido. And that you paid my sin. Y que pagaste mis pecados. Today, Hoy día, I offer myself a sacrifice to you. Me ofrezco como sacrificio a ti. I ask you to wash me, Te pido que me laves, clean me, me limpies, make me something new, me hagas algo nuevo, that I may enter, enter into a holy place with you. Y así puedo entrar al lugar santo contigo. If you've done that for the very first time, and you've meant it in your heart, y lo has dicho de corazón, Yeshua said, Yeshua dijo, that if you do not profess me before man, que si no me profesas delante de los hombres, I cannot and will not profess you before my Father in heaven. No puedo profesarte ni te profesaré delante del Padre. If you've done that for the very first time, si has hecho eso por la primera vez, and you've meant it in your heart, y lo has hecho de corazón, just slip up your hand so we can pray with you. Levanta tu mano así oraremos contigo. If you're hearing us on radio or television, si estás en radio o televisión, just let us know so we can pray with you. Déjanos saber así oraremos contigo. In your name, Yeshua. En tu nombre, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. No, amen. Amen. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait 
any longer. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture. Truly, the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, 
thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, Yeshua. Shalom. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call.